Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 84 of the Westmarch Workshop, and then we doubled it. Again? There has been a lot of changes and stuff going on in the Diablo community since our last episode, and, well, continuing with the theme for 2016, I am unfortunately not joined by my co-host Leviathan uh, this week, and I guess it we, we should probably just like go through and come out um, and tell you all our little secret that's been going on in the background. Um, I'm sure many of you will remember when I kind of spoiled Leviathan's secret uh, about uh, two months ago, uh, when I actually went through and said that Leviathan is in fact Leviathan's dog. He is a dog pretending to be a human on the stream. Um, I too now have been replaced by Leviathan's dog. I, I am actually Leviathan's dog, and that's why in like the last like six episodes, you've never seen both of us on the show at the same time, uh, because well, I can't be in two places at once. So it's kind of just going back and forth between me playing Leviathan and then me playing Nine Ball. Uh, eventually, I will replace everyone, and everyone will become Leviathan's dog. Uh, but until then. Uh, we do actually have someone else on the show for tonight, and let me go ahead and introduce him. Uh, tonight we will be joined by Jay Howe. I'm sure that you probably already know who this person is because you've watched like millions of his videos um, on the internet about his like numerous guides uh, and info um, videos that he's put out. Uh, and so without further ado, Jay Howe, go ahead, say, say hello, introduce yourself. Tell, tell the people who you are, what you're doing here, why, why are you on our lawn? Well, uh, first off, thanks for having me. I know I talked about this a little bit during our pre-show, but um, I, I remember being distinctly aware of this channel over a year ago and I was super jealous of you guys sitting on the internet talking about Diablo. So I would just like to say I'm honored to be here. Uh, the fact that I get to talk about Diablo with other Diablo guys is always a good time. Well, it, um, it is it is our or and or my pleasure to have you on. Well, I'm excited. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, as Nineball said, um, I've been doing Diablo videos for just about two years. Now, you talk about two-year anniversary for yours. I guess mine would be about two years because I started right around the time Reapers came out. Oh um, wow! So we've we've got a lot of uh, a lot of little anniversaries coming up here. Yeah, I think my YouTube channel is March 25th or March 28th or something like that. So I'll have to oh. check that. But, but yeah, um, you definitely want to go through and check that because I believe <laughs> ours ours is like April 2nd, so that's like a week after yours. Right around the same time. Yeah. But, uh, so I've been doing that. I I dumb lucked my way into a few videos very early on, and I thought, hey, this isn't too bad. Uh, so I've continued to do a lot of Diablo stuff, which um, I'm really passionate about, man. Like we talked about it a little bit again in the, in the pre-show, but my Diablo history goes all the way back to the, I mean, what it came out, 96, Christmas of 96, Diablo 1, something like that. Yeah, it was uh, right there. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was like December 31st, 96. Yeah, right, uh, right around there. And I, I remember a buddy of mine picking it up. And we watched him play it. I mean, it was back in the day where you could just sit and watch your buddies play games for hours, and everybody has access to something where they play on their phone. But I remember that we played on the PlayStation. I remember Diablo right. too. So that this is like a Twitch thing where people will sit there and watch other people play games. Yeah. That, that doesn't make any sense. People don't doesn't do that, right? No, no, we never did that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so it's uh, it's really cool, man, to I guess be a part of the evolution of Diablo, like in some sense of. Um, the YouTube thing has brought a lot of really cool things that have happened. Um, it, it got me on this show. Like I said, the fact that I get to sit around here and talk about a game that I've been playing for the better part of almost 20 years now mm -hmm. in some form or fashion. I mean, the amount of time that I poured into Diablo 2 is kind of probably sickening. Um, and Diablo 3, of course, I absolutely love it. So uh, the fact that I get to be here and be a part of this and talk about something that I love to do and something that I've loved to do basically more than half of my life is really awesome. So I just want to say thank you guys. Uh, I really wish Leviathan was here. I've been communicating with him on and off for several months now. He seems mm -hmm. like a great guy and I would love to converse with him in person or at least uh, verbally, but uh, I know who you are. <laughs> I've, I've been following you for a while, so uh, it, it's cool either way. I get, I'll take one of the two. I think it's a win-win for me. Aw, I, 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 I am so touched. And yes, <laughs> Le Leviathan is a, definitely an awesome person, though a bit of a dick sometimes. <laughs> going back 
I will. I, can, I will. I will. I will one reason why, Stephen, because I know you're listening. I will get you back one day for the whole Jar Jar thing. Mark my words, boy. Mark them well. Mark um, my words. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, we were also mentioning over on the pre-show that you have never been to a BlizzCon. No, and I, I, that, I'm, I really want to go this year, like yeah, more this, than ever. This will. This is something that will have to happen. This will need to change because we need to just have more like Diablo community people like coming to BlizzCon every year, and eventually we can just like take over and like rush the <laughs> stage. And like nobody cares about the next World of Warcraft expansion. <laughs> you know, it's like Chris Metzen, get off the stage. We're talking about Diablo. That's right. And we have no idea what it is because we're fans, not developers. But we're just gonna sit here and talk about Diablo for two hours or until security <laughs> gets us, whichever comes first. I'm bigger than most people so i'll play bodyguard you guys just grab the mic and start yelling uh that that, that also that like continues a trend of like people in the diablo community you know like um because uh, uh you know i'm not exactly a short person you know i'm five foot ten but then you know steven is like six foot and then um tj archon um who of course uh started the show along with me uh, back in the day, is ginormous. He's like I think like eight foot three. That is an exaggeration, <laughs> but not by much. Um, you know, so I noticed there's a lot of very very tall people in the Diablo community. Well, I'm about six six. So. So yeah, you, you'd you'd actually be right <laughs> up there if we can actually if we can get you and TJ together, and then the rest of us will have to like stand on boxes to actually get <laughs> up to eye level to be in the uh, the photo. We'll make sure uh, we'll put everybody on our shoulders. Nobody will be able to ignore us then. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, we'll just walk around Diablo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, you you definitely will have to uh, come out uh, because last year, um, just this is of course everyone that's listened to the show. We talked about this for like a month, you know, afterwards, and it still always comes up in the episodes. But you know, like this last BlizzCon, even though there wasn't. Um, like any big expansion announcement or Diablo 4 or anything like that, we still um, had like such an amazing time with getting to meet and hang out with so many people from the Diablo community all in one place that uh, you know, I don't want to I don't want to speak on behalf of like a lot of other people in the Diablo community, but I'm sure having someone especially of your your caliber and like if just like if you haven't if you don't know who jay how is you need to go and check out his youtube page uh just do a search for uh jay how um or jay how gaming you'll go through and find it he's got tons of excellent guides covers everything there is in the game um and just having someone of your caliber there would just be like another great face to have to be a part of the experience well, I, I certainly appreciate the sentiment. I take a look at some of the other guys and what they're doing, and um, I, I guess to have that type of recognition is really cool. Um, I, I take a look at a guy like Riker, who was there last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Quinn, obviously, is like the... He's doing big things. Yeah, um, he's like the rock star. Yeah, he's he's the rock star. Um, I, I would love... like I, I actually uh, communicate with Riker a lot. We're actually... I would say we're actually pretty good friends uh, via online, so... Uh, getting there to meet you guys, everybody in the community that I've been watching for a long time. Like I remember when you guys' videos went up on YouTube. I, was it? I might have been under the BlizzPro channel, and I remember mm -hmm. watching the videos. Like I just sat there and watched you guys talk about BlizzCon. Like it was just like I want to be there, but I watched the whole thing. Like, I was just, like it, was, it was just so cool, and I think that's one of the things that really sold me. Like man, I got to be there next year. Like just watching you guys sit and talk and pass the mic around. Yeah, it was really awesome. Even if you get, because even if you get like the. Um the uh you know the digital ticket and watch it from home or listen to us talk you can never match like just like the passion and the feeling of being there uh hanging out and talking with the developers like we can go through and they they i i love you know everything that um the community team has done as far as going and getting the lightning talk youtube videos um or yeah. lightning talks up on youtube videos uh but when you're there in person and it's not like recorded like a couple months afterwards but when you get to see the the devs and the sound designers and like you know artists and stuff like that just sit there and talk about this thing that they are so passionate and love so much that it just it, it can't it can't help but be moved uh, or you can't help but be moved by it going and, you know, seeing these people with so much passion and pride in the, this product that they work on. I, I wonder if I should even say how I watched the, the Diablo. Well, I mean, if you're going to ask the question and put it out there, you have to answer it. I, uh, 
I couldn't afford the virtual ticket, so I, I made a buddy of mine share it on Skype <laughs> and put the, put his microphone up next to his speaker uh, so I could watch the Diablo. I didn't watch any other part of BlizzCon, just the one hour, or hour and a half, or two hour Diablo session, whatever it was. That's how I watched the, the Diablo session. They're probably going to like come after me with this. Like, how dare you steal our product? But man, I'm sorry. Like, I couldn't afford $40 at the time. <laughs> And I was just thinking, like, this is the only way I'm going to get to watch it. I didn't care about any other thing about BlizzCon. I just wanted to watch mm -hmm. um, the Diablo sessions. So yep. That was how I did it. <laughs> well, well, your secret is safe with us, but unfortunately, the, you know, there might be a couple of people that listen to the show that might tell on you. Um, <laughs> or might be the people that they'd actually, like, tell to. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I guess we're... We're a little bit into the show now, and we should actually discuss something besides, you know, BlizzCon or yeah. Diablo news, you know, that's more current than November. Um, which, of course, you know, it, it's been a while. Again, sorry, you know, uh, last week we had no episode because I had some dental surgery done, and I just felt, you know, it, oh, you know, I felt like I should just kill myself uh, because that might be an easier way of dealing with the pain. And then, you know, the, the week prior to that, um, and I guess I should start like three weeks ago when I was like practically dying. Um, and then the next week when I had uh, still lingering uh, from the, uh, the virus or whatever it was that afflicted me, which was the great thing. It's like nobody nobody was able to tell me what I was afflicted with. It's not the flu. It's not the cold. It's not a bacterial infection. We have no idea. Here's some drugs. Take these. And if it gets worse, call us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I still actually have like the cough from it now, like three weeks later. Um, but uh, I'm feeling better. My health is back. I am not dying. Um, always but, a good thing. Yeah, always a good thing. And then now, of course, Leviathan's PC is dead. Um, so I guess my affliction moved on to his computer. <laughs> I didn't know viruses or computer viruses, you know, transferred that way, but well, I mean, we have, we have some, some causality cause and effect here. So maybe, maybe it might be, who knows one day. Um, but yeah, uh, since our last episode, you know, they, we have the 2.4.1 PTR, uh, going up. I guess this is kind of tying in with uh, some of the predictions that Leviathan and I had that we would not be seeing every season have a major patch to it. That we wouldn't like go in and like have like a we'd have three seasons and so we'd have a 2.4, 2.5, and a 2.6. So we have a 2.4.1. Then maybe in the next season we might have a 2.5 or a 2.4.2 uh, going. You know, looking way ahead into season seven there. Um, yeah, we, we just missed um, talking about the uh, server slam that happened this past weekend where they wanted everyone to come on and test like uh, particular things in order to go and like just get a lot of people playing the game uh, and getting, um, you know, just uh, specific, very specific testing in. And I know you had some comments uh, earlier about this, about what yeah. you thought about the server slam. The server slam, you know, I, I feel like they did this... Um maybe the last PTR as well. And it, it makes sense because uh, it's been the last couple patches. The biggest complaint is that high greater rifts and especially in group play, the amount of lag that comes out. And it, it, I like the fact that they're doing these things. And the cool thing is that the, there's plenty of people that are on there. Now, obviously the PTR isn't quite as dense as it was say last summer mm -hmm. when Kanai's cube came out and you had to wait hours upon hours to get in the PTR. Yep. Uh, now you can get right in. Um, there's only a few minor server issues, but you know it's one of those things. Like they took it down, and then uh, I was actually streaming earlier, and somebody said, "Hey, when do you think they're going to bring back the community buff?" I was like, "Wait a minute, it's gone." Man, it makes me wonder if they're going to try and do another one of these, um, basically to say, "Hey, you know, like uh, we're going to give you a reason to come back and play the PTR by giving you that community buff again, and maybe they'll try it again. Maybe that will happen." Um, I don't oh, know. Sorry. Dog, okay. it's going crazy it. in the. <laughs> I will get myself. Uh, but it, it it does go a long way, I think, to help the game, especially when you talk about the the consistent pattern of uh, complaints, which they've helped you know reduce, whether it be through the way skills worked or how much animation came out or the way that they've kind of manipulated things. So I think it's one of those things that it it's neat the fact that. We're two years now almost from Reaper of Souls. We're almost four years into the game. Um, I hope my timeline's correct. But either way, um, 
it's cool that they still put in this much effort to help reduce some of the issues that a lot of people are having. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that they're going to continue with these patches over time, like your show intro said, and then they doubled it. Uh, it seems to be kind of what this patch is about. Um, but I, I do like the fact that they're putting in that type of effort um, to make the gameplay still enjoyable, even after all this time. I think that's really cool. Yeah, and I mean, especially with like them adding in uh, set dungeons in 2.4 and then yeah. in 2.4.1, them trying to modify it, taking a lot of the feedback and criticisms that they've got about it. <laughs> but they, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they want to find new ways to play the game. And so that's something I'm really looking forward to uh, whenever we do actually get our next major patch about what, what else they might add in, you know, um, you know, some of the some of the things obviously from the the uh, the old uh, cursed realm uh, data files that were you know like the data mined like a year ago um, that eventually made their way in and became set dungeons. If they you know I think this is an idea we had a couple episodes ago about like a, a class neutral set dungeon or you know kind of like quotation set dungeon, but some sort of challenge specifically for someone. Or if they do maybe like a group challenge, like a, a, a dungeon that can only be activated with multiple people in order to try and go through and have like set um, uh, objectives that you have to be able to try and complete and somehow make it to where it has to be completed by a group. Give me an Uber dungeon. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like every so often you'd come along the different Ubers mm -hmm. and along the way you have to fight. Oh man, that sounds really fun. <laughs> yeah. It, it would be. It would, And that would also harken back a little bit to how the Ubers were in D2 because you actually yeah. you you'd get um the keys that would activate portals into realms that you had to go and find the mob that would drop the organ that would then unlock the uh the uber realm or uber tristram in order to fight the ubers you know in order to get your hellfire torch you know there's a couple steps where you actually had to go through a, a dungeon in order to actually get to the boss so like it, maybe if it unlocked like a little tiny grift that you could uh go through and play around in um, in order to have an alternate way of unlocking the Ubers, I don't. I don't know if you ever did this. Um, sitting in IRC chat, and there was like a, a channel specifically created to monitor Stone of Jordan sales. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, what, was, what was it? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the website that I use, Uber Hunter, or something uh, along those lines. I can't. I, I I was mainly an IRC chat. Yeah, it had it had an IRC that I would hop into okay. and just monitor okay. and such. But it would also sometimes like if it was, um, if I didn't want to like pay attention um, specifically to how it was going in IRC, it had it had live updates with the SOJ sales like on the uh, the website itself. <laughs> to like go through and show you so you could go and you know grab your uh, your Uber Diablos for the Anil uh, the Anulis and it was uh yeah. Uh, Dang, that, that bring back that brings back memories of just <laughs> sitting and like grinding. Sitting. Where, how many how many they got sold? No, how many got sold? Ah oh, shit, a bot just activated a, a ghost <laughs> server. Let me just go through and hop on and try and grab it. You know. I I remember those days and just hunting hunting for that Uber Diablo. Yeah. <laughs> it uh it definitely made it a lot easier to try and farm up Anolis charms. Took the RNG out of it a little bit. Yeah, there, there was, uh, I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it was pretty popular back in the day when people did that, but at the same time, I feel like there's so many people that, that never knew it existed, but... Mm-hmm. I, I want to say that I never actually got... It, it was it was a very long time after 1.10 um, that I even found out that those types of communities and such existed. I want to say it was probably around, like, maybe 2007 by the time that I discovered, you know, those types of things. So it was around the time, like, Diablo 3 was actually announced. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh, I can actually be more efficient in how I play this game. Make it a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool stuff yeah. in the game, though. I, I don't know if you want to move on. One of the yeah. unfortunate announcements... Cosmetics. Oh, yes, so they added in this cool thing where bosses dropped cosmetic items. You could go through, you could get um, uh, Rainer's helmet from StarCraft 2, you could get like butterfly wings and ghost wings and bat wings and all this stuff and uh, pets and crap you know all the, all the different like transmog items and stuff and it was like awesome. People were going crazy about this and and 
then they divided it by zero and it is no longer here. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, I was in Riker's stream the other day and somebody like quoted like, oh, Wyatt Ching said this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure he did. You know, you know, how Twitch chat goes, right? I just thought somebody was trolling us. Yeah. And I, I went over to Twitter and I checked Wyatt Ching's Twitter and I was like, what? Like, no, that's an actual quote. And I was so disappointed. I was like, no way. Like, come on. Like, they look, I understand, I guess, like wings and stuff. They want it to be a little bit more rewarding. Maybe they have other plans for it. But the fact that they unleashed, maybe that was the plan all along. Let's tease them on the early part of PTR and said, oops, never mind. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was the plan all along to make people want them more. But um, they look absolutely amazing. Like, they look phenomenal. Like, I want all of them. Yep. Like, it's so cool. I wonder what they're going to do with them is the big question. Yeah, and how they're going to implement them. Because I remember, you know, some of Wyatt's comments was just, like, the, the ease of access uh, and, it t like, taking away from the items and such from the collector's editions. Um, you know, but this this is something that people have been asking for since they announced its inclusion, you know, for the Chinese realms as being something right. that you could purchase. Um, and they were always uh, very hesitant about going and adding that back in um, to the uh, the non because in like in China the game is free to play. You can log on and play the game for free. Um, but you know you they subsidize the cost by having cosmetic effects that you can purchase with real money. Uh, though you can earn certain in-game currencies to to buy it eventually. Um, but they're very, very hesitant uh, in the U.S. And now they've never gone out and said it, but the general consistence, consensus is normally um, that they're still working in the shadow of the real money auction house. So they don't want to add in anything that could possibly be conceived as a money grab or anything like that because <laughs> they're still you know, kind of um, hesitant about wanting to do anything like uh, that. But a very large portion, or at least a very vocal portion of the community, has been asking for these cosmetic items, throwing their, you know, throwing their wallets and credit cards at the computer screen, uh, just screaming, you know, Blizzard, take my money, um, <laughs> the, you know, about wanting to have some of these added in. And I was actually really surprised that when all this stuff was data mined, that it ended up being, you know, just item drops as opposed to seeing it as like a little cosmetic shop or something along those lines. Um, I mean, I, I play a fair amount of Heroes of the Storm now. Yeah. And the amount of people that absolutely, like, want, like, every skin for their favorite hero, mm -hmm. like, the amount of skins that you see are, are crazy. The amount of people that like the cosmetic side of games, like, I thought that was a pretty good, um, I, you know, thing to point at and say, hey, look at all these people buying this stuff. And the amount of people that I've heard over the last however long, they're like, yes, put that in the game. I would buy that. I would buy mm -hmm. another stash tab. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I have no idea how many skins I've purchased for Heroes of the Storm for heroes that I don't even play, <laughs> let alone the fact that I've like barely played the game in like the last three or four months. But I, I you know, it's like there was one that was just like, uh, yeah, sure. I'll just buy the hero in the skin combo pack. I save some money and I like the skin. Never touch the hero. Still level one. <laughs> but hey, I've got that skin. And then like having to go through and buy mounts and then always just go back to the ugly Kodo because hey, I like it. It's the free one, but whatever. Oh, I remember when they came out with the Diablo mount. Ah, uh, yes. I, I instantly grabbed that one. What was that was the one for getting 70 in season... Three? Yeah, the um, season three was it? I think it was. Four? I think it was. Yeah, three. you had to get, you had to get to level seventy um, in season three, or you had to complete, like you had to like get like four hundred achievement points or something along. The, it was something like that. I got it um, like day you got, one. Yeah, and you got Malpiel's <laughs> charger um, for the game. And they had the uh, the back. I can't remember what it was in Heroes, but you got to have the Heroes portrait icon. In yeah, Diablo. that. I think that, I, that was just I, like I getting level. That was like just like getting heroes level ten. Yeah, you know, and right. and then you got the uh, the uh, banner and the uh, portrait. Yeah, I I like all that stuff. Yeah, but I mean, people people really love these cosmetic things. I actually played World of Warcraft for the first time in eight months 
because they came out with a new hero for Hearthstone, the uh, the Paladin um, oh, wow. uh, Lady uh, Lilandra, so that way you could go through and have that alternate art um, for the Paladin instead of always playing Uber or Uther. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck in Uber mode, you know. It's just like it starts with a U, it's becoming Uber now. Um, and it's like you had to level up a World of Warcraft tune to level 20, even though I had characters above level 20. It specifically only dinged, or you only got credit at level 20, not above it or below it or anything like that. So I just log in, look through my whole list of characters. Oh, I've got a level 17. This will take 30 minutes. It ended up taking like an hour because I'm like stuck in Moonglade and I don't have a Hearthstone and I have no idea (laughs) what I was doing with this character last time I played it, you know, freaking like three years ago. Um, I just rolled, I have a level 17 Druid on some random server that who who knows. Um, But yeah, and so I went back in to go through and play that just so I had a hero in Hearthstone. So, I mean, the cosmetic items even got me to play World of Warcraft again. Um, so, yeah. It's it's out there. The uh, People people like cosmetic stuff. I, I mean, they're, they're finding ways to get it in. What their plan is going forward is the next question. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see with all those items going through and more or less being removed. Um, uh, in this uh, minor update that was just yesterday, um, whether they will, they I think it is uh, it was something along the lines of the the likelihood of them coming back for 2.4.1 is extremely low, uh, but to look forward for future updates as they you know potentially find ways to add them back in, I think it would be uh, great ways. I know there was one thing that they showed at. Um, BlizzCon uh, was on Dariel's Wings that they had mentioned was going to be like a cosmetic reward for a future season. Um, and so they might be able to do it, um, certain things like that. Because, you know, honestly, even if you put like, um, like it has to be Torment 10 as the drop in order to go through and get this item with how easy it is to just go in and target farm a specific boss or a specific mob, uh, unique or whatever, uh, that, you know, you, everyone is going to be walking around with butterfly wings if you just have to go and <laughs> kill Magda on Torment 10, you know, because yeah. you can go and do that with just, a, you know, a couple of days, you know, like uh, 12, 15 hours of playtime will be able to get you up to level 70 into Torment 10. Um, especially with the, the free set bonuses or the free sets that you get along the way with the season journey now. Um, it's going to be, uh, this is going to be, really really easy to get those if they tie it something around maybe more of achievements or something along the lines of maybe it's a a tied as a reward from a conquest make it a little bit more unique or add a little bit more of a challenge in order to get those items that might be a way of getting people more interested in completing conquests which might make their uh, their seasonal journey a little bit easier i um i still speculate about that empty spot Right beyond Torment 10 in mm-hmm. the difficulty level. I still speculate. I actually been throwing around some ideas. Need to get Blizzard on the phone, throw them the, their way. Yeah. <laughs> just, I just, there, just there's dial. something coming, right? I mean, there has to be. No, there, I mean, they, you know, before when they said that they're happy, you know, with, uh, you know, Torment 6 being the uh, the upper limit and yeah. such, and then they, they finally, <laughs> you know, went through and gave in that, okay, we'll, we'll go through and we'll modify it. We'll add in, you know, like the Torment 10. You know, because level, you know, like level 45 is, you know, that's a good farmable place. Yeah, sure. With the uh, the changes that we'll be talking about here in a little bit um, that they've made to uh, damage scaling uh, past level 70 um, in uh, the uh, griffs, it's going to be one of those ones where it's like, uh, you know, 45. I mean, 45 already is a joke. Torment 10 is a joke um, at this point. Or maybe if they go up to Torment 13 or Torment uh, 15, something along those lines, so we can get up to, uh, say, Torment or uh, like Greater Rift 70, 60 ish, you know. Or you, get, you know, with the people going through in, uh, in season six, I'm sure like 120, 125 is going to be easily um, the uh, the cap for you know a lot of groups and such. And solo players are going to be 110, 115, or if not higher. That will need something like you know a torment 80 that's going to be farmable because it's going to be something that needs to be worth our time. Because right now torment 10 is just is just greater rift keys and you know getting some gold in order to um fulfill our uh, our stashes for more empowerments and then they'll double it and then they'll double it 
<laughs> so yes, Torment. Torment. We already called it here. Torment 15 will be equivalent to uh, Greater Rift 90. There we go. <laughs> they doubled it. Uh, my my idea, in a nutshell, is to take your gear and basically put like an eye level on it. I mean, because technically there was like um like a leveling system. I used to be able to identify stuff back in the day mm-hmm. and make it like a flexible one. So if it falls in like you know, eye level from World of Warcraft gear. So if it falls in this range, then the difficulty scales to this level. And there's no, like, given number. It's just, like, it's going to be more difficult. Make it something epic. Make it, like, something that when you go in, there's something cool that happens if you're able to do this. And it, it, that way it puts it at something that may be more difficult or more rewarding for high-skilled, high high-geared high people, mm-hmm. uh, but still doable by low-geared people, even though they don't have as good as gear. It might just be a little less rewarding. I don't know. That's what greater riffs are, but at the same time, I feel like there's... Ah, oh, man, I, I, there's a much longer-winded version in it. We're not going to get into that. Let's talk about other <laughs> stuff. <laughs> All right, then. Moving on, then. Uh uh, so of course, you know, with this patch, there uh, came a lot of changes, um, and some of the biggest ones uh, are, you know, you'd look through the patch notes and you might see like the only change, like with uh, yesterday's update, like the new the new change to like Akaret's champion. The damage bonus granted is now multiplicative with other sources of bonus damage. You look at it, oh, well, that seems really boring, you know, boring. Let me just move on and find something else. No, that is huge. Absolutely huge. They went through and they've changed um, so many things. I know, like um, the uh, uh, co- like for demon hunters, the wolf companion pet. The damage bonus is now multiplicative, and all of these other <laughs> damage bonuses that they've added from uh, set bonuses or from passives and such that have been changed to multiplicative damage bonuses are like huge. It's game changing. That was one of those things. It's like, uh, why is uh, you know, why is like Bane of the Trap so much more powerful than something like Tyguk that can get stacked as a much higher damage bonus much faster? And it's like, well, because, you know, Tyguk, you know, adds, you know, if you have like, like a, a rank, uh, if you can get it up to 100 stacks, it was a 50% damage bonus, whereas, you know, Bane of the Trap might only be 30% damage bonus. Uh, but that that 50% damage bonus from Tyguk is being added on you know, to your dex damage bonus, your passives damage bonus, your sets damage bonuses. Uh, so, like, that extra 50% is being added on to something that might already be 2,000% increased damage. So, it's <laughs> it's very it's a very, very tiny increase. That's why you don't, you know, all of a sudden see your damage increase by 50% when you get up to, you know, like 100 stacks on Ty Gook. But with Bane of the Trapped, it's a multiplicative bonus that happens after everything. So that is not adding 30, just a 30% to 2,000. You know, it's multiplying that 2,000 by 30%. So that way you're up to 20, 2,600 damage as opposed to 230%. So these multiplicative changes are absolutely huge. And especially something like Akarat's Champion, which is going through and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, giving you like that 35% damage bonus. Uh, it's... It's it, it's that that is huge. It's increasing, um, you know, the econ sets output by thirty five percent. You know, just across the board. We just went through and it's like, okay, this set is now thirty five percent more powerful, um, you know, than than it was previously. You, but, I remember um, the skull grasp when they mm-hmm. first the, like previewed it, and you could see the preview, and it's like, oh, it's gonna. I think the original was like four hundred to five hundred percent or something yeah. like that. And you're like, oh man, this is going to be like game changer. You know, whirlwind is going to be off the off the charts. Except it was additive, mm-hmm. and it got outperformed by a convention. It got outperformed by a Stone of Jordan, and it was basically a waste. And now they made it so it's multiplicative. I think it's now three hundred. It caps at three hundred percent. I believe um, so. So it now is like I saw on the PTR earlier. Like all of a sudden, there's a whirlwind build. I think it cleared like a mid to upper eighties. Mm-hmm. And they still might do some stuff with it, but it was made um, based on the skull grass being used in some capacity, and they had it in their cube. And I'm thinking, like, finally, like that ring actually matters. Like it was mm-hmm. made for one purpose only: the whirlwind build, and it never amounted to anything. And we've had it for this long, and they finally made it. And uh, I think it's uh, it couldn't have come any bit later than it has. And I'm I'm glad they finally made it. Uh, to where it's actually worth something like that. That that to me is like one of the biggest changes because 
everybody for as long as you can remember, right? Going back so many years, loves the whirlwind bell. There's just mm-hmm. something about it. And I mean, when that, it was taken, that, that's like an iconic thing of barbarians <laughs> since 2000. Yeah. yeah, it's like since since 2000, it's like <laughs> barbarians should have a top build that involves whirlwind, just always. because always in forever, <laughs> barbarians whirlwind. That's it. End of story. Who who's ever heard of a barbarian that doesn't whirlwind? I mean, come on. Come I know. On. <laughs> Instead, they just uh, they juggernaut everybody and just run straight in, <laughs> dive bomb. Uh. But yeah, no, it's, uh, so, I mean, that's, that's been one of those ones, um, I know, uh, I believe, uh, like, just some other things that have been changed, the, like, the Archon damage, you know, our, uh, <laughs> uh, Wizard Archon form was doing some really obscene things, um, in solo builds over on, um, the, the PTR, so they scaled back the damage, um, just a little bit. Just a little. They took <laughs> off it a so zero. <laughs> yes. It was like they, they changed the damage bonus um, to be, uh, or at least the damage bonus from enemies killed to being multiplicative. They also buffed the bonus damage from Archon from 20% to 300%, and then now they now they, now they scaled it back to 30. Like, to wait be... a minute, that, that's actually really powerful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like one of those ones where it's like, yeah, we should... should change that just a little bit there was some math and this is actually something in a i I think when i first saw that i I remember copying and pasting it to Riker, Mm -hmm. and he's like yeah that's the equivalent of x amount of greater rift levels because there was actually some math that he actually beat you to it in chat and went and said that only amounts to about seven greater rift levels hey look at that (laughs) yeah there was um there was i remember wyatt ching posted some uh some math knowledge on us about how like the the percentages would scale and what it meant towards greater rift levels. And that came out, I don't know, maybe last fall, last late summer. And I remember like it was such a like an eye-opening take. Maybe it was later last year. But it was such an eye-opening take from somebody that like actually... Because I don't want to say there's not as many people. But as far as like charts and stuff that are out there, obviously this far into the game, it's going to be a little bit harder to find people that are doing quite that amount of math or, or whatever they are trying to do. But obviously, the guys at Blizzard and Diablo team have all this data. I mean, you take a look at what they test on the PTR, you know, this whole, like, and then we doubled it thing for this patch. They basically had 2.4 PTR, 2.4 data, what people tried, now 2.4.1. So they have, like, a bunch of data on how to scale stuff. And I don't think we're going to see things quite as drastic as we saw in 2.4 because they're not introducing as many new items, um, which is understandable. I think they've got like a slow rotation of items that are going to be coming. Either Mm -hmm. way, for for them to put in this much effort, like this far in, um, I I like the fact that they're going to continue to pay attention to the game. And I know we've got, let me take a look and make sure I'm not moving too far forward. Um, They've got plans for Diablo 3 possibly keeping it alive for so ever long before we get into some future talk. But I, I like the fact that they've made, I, 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 I feel like they've got, they've got like a very specific plan for the entire year mm-hmm. and it makes their job easier to allow them to continue to work on Diablo things. <laughs> yes. Diablo things in the background that they may or may not be talking about. <laughs> Dun, 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 foreshadowing. Um, yeah, I guess if we want to, we can just go ahead and jump into that topic. Well, I want to I want to talk about one quick thing uh, oh, that okay. was undocumented. Okay. But it was what we talked about before with the Demon Hunter. So we mm-hmm. saw this in 2.4 PTR. We saw the uh, Shadow set with the Marauder set hybrid, and it was just absolutely obliterated, obliterating everything. And they said, nope. And then 2.4.1 came out, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, wait a minute, it's back. And then they changed everything for that two-piece uh, shadow set, to now it says, instead of saying all damage, it now says your damage. Mm-hmm. And since your sentries aren't your damage, technically, those sentries yeah. aren't near as powerful. So that got nerfed. It, it wasn't acknowledged mm-hmm. in the patch notes. I'm really disappointed by that, because yeah. it, was, it, was, it was such a huge thing that first I, week. I, I want to say that my theory behind this one is probably like when they... M- when they went and made the change from puffing 
all damage, which includes like your pets and your sentries and such, which made the old uh, four-piece shadow, four-piece marauders so powerful for the 2.4 PTR, um, is that they actually like scrubbed that line and then added in new code <laughs> to go and just increase your damage because they also at the same time uh, nerf the damage on that um, on that set bonus as well from a thousand you know down to I think it was they first nerfed it down to like four hundred or six hundred percent because that, I know that changed a couple of times um, during the uh, the beta and now they they've buffed it back up to I think it was twelve hundred percent twelve hundred now yeah yeah and probably what they did is they went back and looked at the code oh I've got the string of code here that already has it at a thousand percent weapon damage so let's just scrub the other one and turn this back on and then change the thousand to two hundred. Um, and... I just I couldn't believe that it got through. Like, yeah, they already went through it like four months ago, and then it happened again. I was like, maybe they meant it. Maybe they yeah. meant it this time. Oh no, no, they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> maybe John Yang just wanted to sneak that one in so he could go through, and he really enjoyed that build, so he wanted to see if he could sneak it in past uh past whoever is in charge of uh upkeeping the patch, you know, for uh this time around. He just wanted to uh play some S4 M4, uh for a little bit before they caught it. But unfortunately, they have now caught it. So, rip yeah. again. Uh, Riker posted the quote in there as far as like how the um, damage scales as far as what we were talking about earlier with that, based, mm -hmm. based around the Archon damage. So if anybody was curious and they're not looking at chat, um, that's a good bit of info if you're wondering like how much that is. So, Yeah, basically what it is is that uh, uh, from, like, from his quote is that uh, in the Greater Rift levels, the mob... Um, HP increases by 17% every rift level that you go up. So even a change as huge as that one, um, going from 300 to 30% is only like seven levels because of how much the HP scales and how quickly it goes up um, every time that you jump a level. Well, uh, real quick question. Um, there's new damage levels. Uh, yes. So we have um, to get into it at some point. Yeah, we can talk about this before, even though I guess we kind of put that one in out of order on the show. <laughs> um, but they didn't, They as we're talking about like the uh, HP scaling and stuff like that in greater rift levels, in 2.4.1, they did also change um, the damage and experience scaling inside greater rifts. Um, above tier 70, they... Um, uh, greater Rifts normally would scale, the damage of the mobs themselves would scale by about 7.2% uh, rounding um, per level that you go up. Uh, so that's why you would notice like, at a certain point you would just get to where it's like, well, I'm getting one shot by everything. This is it. That's my limit. I can't go, I can't go up any further. As well as the amount of experience per Greater Rift level was increasing by 8%. Um, they changed those numbers. Um, in 2.4.1, um, above Greater Rift 70. So now damage is only increased by 2.4% or 2.338%. Uh, percent. Uh, and so that makes it so where instead of the damage itself from the mobs doubling every 10 levels that you went up. So if you went from uh, Greater Rift 40 to Greater Rift 50, the amount of damage that you have coming in has doubled. And then, you know, 50 to 60 is doubled again. 60 to 70 is doubled again. Uh, now the damage will take 30 tiers um, in order to actually double. So before jumping from Greater Rift 70 to Greater Rift 80, you know, it doubled the amount of damage that you had. Now you are going all the way up to uh, if you were able to survive uh, Greater Rift 80, you can survive the damage in Greater Rift 100 now. Um, so it's just it's uh, the, the this little small change in the percentage of the damage scaling is absolutely huge, um, and they also are nerfing the experience. Um, higher than uh, Greater Rift 70. This one was done a little bit, I imagine, in order to try and uh, close that gap a little bit uh, between uh, solo and group play. Uh, because now, you know, the people that, even though they might still have like seven Greater Rifts ahead of you, their XP bonus is much, much smaller. Uh, because it's uh, the change from 5% or from 8% to 5%. So now your ex your experience increase instead of doubling every nine tiers uh, is now doubling every 14 tiers. That helps uh, helps the Paragon gap. Yes. That, that has been so prevalent 
uh, as of the last few patches with these people that you can almost find consistently that are in the 2,000 Paragons now. Mm-hmm. The people that are like Paragon 1,000, like a week into the, a week into the new <laughs> season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, but hey, even though they're dropping the XP, they're increasing they're increasing the uh, the upper limit that they'll be able to go through and get uh, with uh, just uh, reducing the damage, because that's what a lot of it ends up coming to with the people at the the higher end is just like they have to they have to have so many stacked supports for uh, multiple you know like the kind of like multiplying on all these different types of damage reduction and uh, resistance and armor increases and such so just so that way they can survive the damage now they're going to have a lot more freedom where they can bring either more force multipliers or bring in more damage dealers uh, to increase the amount of output that they're doing uh, since they don't have to care about the amount of damage that they're receiving anywhere near as much yeah i think it's a, it's a definitely a good step and it definitely gives the um the whole greater rift experience a little bit more longevity for a lot of these people that uh, are getting the newer gear or getting the buffs and wanting to see they're like wait i can't keep doing the same things i'm doing like i only go up a couple levels if I can't survive and yeah. um i think it helps quite a bit yeah definitely and like this this will just be um you know nice all around for the you know maybe not so much i don't want to really say like the casual player but for the solo player you know, that yeah. just that doesn't really want to group. They just want to go through and they do their own thing. They won't feel as far behind as the people in groups. I think it's uh, everything that they're doing is right. Like every mm-hmm. every step that they've made has been a good step. Yeah, they they still have their core philosophies of you know multiplayer should be better and such, but they're they're acknowledging kind of the shortfalls and the requests from the community itself. I uh get excited on where this is progressing as far as our notes go. Yes. And <laughs> uh because I believe that's it's a uh, a couple of our, our last things um to go through and talk about. Um you know, if we want to if we want to jump in and put our speculation um conspiracy caps on here for a little bit. I I am more than okay with that. <laughs> All right. So let's let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh we've talked about this um on prior episodes. Um, we everybody at this point knows about the you know new job postings uh, that had got posted at first with the art director and then a couple others and now we have even more uh, new job postings. They're looking for senior character artists, concept artists, lighting artists, and such for a Diablo unannounced project. Um, and so this is really going through and pointing towards um, Diablo Four. Uh, I really am beginning to believe less and less that we're going to get um, a Diablo 3 expansion 2 and that we are just going to go straight into Diablo 4 uh, but obviously they're right now they're they're hiring mainly just like high level positions like senior character artists concept artists and art director and such so this is a lot of stuff at the very high level conceptual design phase so it'll probably be a few years um you know, before we see anything about these projects that they're working on. I remember shortly after BlizzCon and kind of the announcements that were coming out in terms of the way the patches were going, um, the amount, like, I even, like, broke it down to the, like, where the stash tabs are being added. Like, if you take a look at this new stash tab and then if it fills up the entire one, it's basically the equivalent of one year. Mm -hmm. And they then announced that seasons are only going to be three months apiece. And if you take a look at that rotation, it's about, it would basically put the last patch of what I would perceive to be like a year's worth of patches right around October, November, which is right around BlizzCon. Is it convenient? It was rather convenient that they could possibly say that, hey, we've, they, and, I, and this is something I don't know if we talked about before or during the pre-show, is that it, it really feels like, I have a cat, sorry, I'm going to move kitty. <laughs> Um, there's our one appearance, maybe second, but either way, it really feels like they, they've planned out the entire year. They're basically, they're not doing these huge patches that we're going to see. Um, this is something that I've talked about with Riker a time or two. And he said, you know, it really feels like a lot of, between Kanai's cube, uh, between all, I mean, think about the amount of items that came out in 2.4. Like it was, it was crazy. So 2.3 and 2.4. Uh, were huge item boons mm-hmm. and it was like it, you could put all of that content 
presumably in an expansion itself. So oh, yeah. maybe they canceled the expansion product project and mm -hmm. started just releasing it over patches. And it, it's kept the game alive. I mean, you see these huge waves, right? The hardcore fans are going to stay on, but every time mm -hmm. there's a new season, a new patch, like the, people just come out in droves. Oh, yeah. And, and they, ex especially the changes that they made in 2.4 got a lot of new people in that hadn't played in a while and got them, or people that would come in and play a season for like a week or two. And it got <laughs> it got them playing for like a month. I know, um, you know, uh, um, Eldorian, you know, the co-founder of BlizzPro, like, he was playing Diablo 3. This is like the most he's ever played in 2.4 because of all the changes that they made to bring these people back in and give them something to do for a season. I, it's it's really cool, man. I, I, I really feel like they've got the entire year planned out so that they can release a couple of new items for every patch. They can buff up the numbers. They've did these scaling changes that will give people the next two or three patches to go through start to achieve a lot of stuff that they've wanted to achieve, continue to have progressions. We saw the part that we talked about earlier with cosmetics and wings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this is something that they teased a little bit. I'm not, maybe conspiracy, right? Maybe they teased it a little bit. <laughs> yep. That actually, we're not going to do this. We're going to do this in some other fashion later. And it gives people a reason to come back. They're like, hey, you know, we saw them available for a week or two. Sorry, Wyatt Chang, if I'm crazy tinfoil hat guy right now. <laughs> But perhaps there was some thought process, and I, I don't blame it. Like I, it, it, it really gathered my interest. When I remember um, I, I started seeing these people started to get these wings, and I was like, wait a minute, these things look absolutely amazing. Like everything that they've talked about that they've added, like it feels like there's a lot coming, at least for the year, to keep people playing, to keep people coming back each patch, each season. But it really feels like there's something on the horizon between all these job announcements, uh, scheduling, mm -hmm. all, all this stuff. And I, I, it almost makes me want to keep playing Diablo 3 just because I hope Diablo 4 is around. <laughs> yeah, you, you get that hype. Oh, there's going to be another one. I remember, um, what was it? After Diablo 3 was announced... Um, all of a sudden, Diablo 2 started appearing in like the top 10 game sales, you know, like the monthly game sales and such that they would go through and publish, which was always like really big during the console wars and stuff like that. Um, that all of a sudden, in, like these, like the top 10 PC game sales and like Diablo 2 is number one. <laughs> you know, it's just like because they just announced Diablo 3 and everyone's like, I got to play this game so bad that I'm going to do anything I can to fill in that gap. And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to play, you know, Diablo 2 while I wait. And hell, I was one of those people that went through and it's like, ah, oh, crap, I can't find my CD key. I got to go buy like my 13th copy of Diablo 2 um, just so I can reinstall it. Um have there been announcements? I, I know, not announcements. The the D two remake, the HD remake. Um, I've not really heard much about it. I like, know, like uh, there's there's like a, a big um, kind of like a fan, uh, almost. It's not like a Kickstarter, but like a fan, a fan funded source project for making an HD remake of Warcraft three. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Like I, I, I uh, it was just a couple of years ago. I mean, it could have been three or four years ago for all I know. But uh, I remember when they came out with an HD remake of Age of Empires 2. I bought it. Like, I played it a couple of times. I thought it looked great. But it had been like 10 or 12 years since I'd played Age of Empires 2. And yep. it was just, it was, a, it was a really cool item to pick. I think I picked it up for like $2. And I thought it was awesome. Like, the fact that I could pick up old school Age of Empires 2, play it. I mean, I spent so many nights, like, playing with friends mm -hmm. just to play Age of Empires 2. Yep. And they came out with an HD remake. All I mean, I say HD remake. It's not necessarily a remake so much as like it's just upscaling graphics. And I think that would be sufficient. And I would pick up Diablo 2 and I would wholeheartedly play it. I would love to play it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one of those things. We we just and we just saw you know patch uh, 1.14a for Diablo 2 uh, to bring it into like the the current era. Because I mean, what is it? Uh, I think. Snow Leopard ended um, Diablo 2's compatibility with um, OS X or something like that. Like it, it has been an extremely, extremely long time since you've been able to install Diablo 2 without the help of third-party apps um, on Macs. 
and you know now they finally now they finally updated it so even if you're running yosemite you can go through and install it with like no problems um you know same thing goes for uh like windows windows 8 windows 10 you had to go through and install like a 3d glide in order to get the the game to work <laughs> yeah. um but now it installs you know properly properly without any issues whatsoever so they're bringing it into the modern age and there was um on the uh, on the job website uh, I don't know if it is still there, but they they have like that kind of classic games division, and yeah, they're still looking for it. They're looking for an art outsource supervisor in order to outsource. Like, uh, they, let me pull this one up specifically uh, because there's someone they're looking to. They're looking for someone. Um, that is a skilled artist to help revitalize StarCraft, WarCraft 3, and Diablo 2, along with an other catalog of classics. It's an art generalist position requiring hands-on direction, management, and engine integration of a wide range of assets, including characters, weapons, and environment props. You know, there so it it's like they, they could actually be going through and working on going and getting, you know, an update, you know, so we might be able to play Diablo 2 on something besides like 640 by 480. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, some interesting things there, but, um, we've had a couple people in chat go through and think, well, are you sure like this unannounced project might not just be an expansion? Um, you I, know, I don't think so. Yeah. With, with like, kind of like the level and the, con this all being like, kind of like concept level jobs and the fact that they're saying like unannounced project as opposed to like unannounced expansion or even just the fact that they're saying unannounced project, um, leads there to bigger was... things and there was um i i can't remember it i couldn't find it uh, a fan or listener to the show um sent in some tweets uh to um, the west march account going through because he noticed something specifically about one of the um programs um or one of like the i think it was like the workflow or something along those lines that they're asking for people to be experienced in is part of the overwatch engine and so they're they're specifically looking for people with um uh art credentials that matches the newest engine that they've created this for the the overwatch engine they're looking for people that would go in and fit within like a brand new um, engine or development process uh, which definitely is pointing at something besides Diablo 3 uh, if they're going through and integrating you know, a different game engine or something like that in the background. Obviously, they're not specifically saying it, but some of the programs that they're, they're asking for experience in are stuff that directly correlates and plugs into the Overwatch engine. There, there's also the other interesting wording. I remember there being something, but it says, Blizzard Entertainment is seeking exceptionally skilled and passionate senior concept artist to help drive the vision of characters and worlds in our next hit game. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that, that, was... that in itself is, I think, very telling. Yeah, that was that was one that they actually had posted in the art director position, and we talked about on a previous uh, um, episode. This was, of course, a, a while ago when they first had that art director unannounced project. But the fact that they're saying worlds, you know, are are we going to go out there and explore something besides? Uh, sanctuary, pandemonium, heaven and hell. You know, are are we going to go to some other places? Because in in the lore, I'm I'm putting my lore geeky nerd hat on at the moment. Um, <laughs> in in the lore, they actually talked about that uh, the whole eternal conflict is over the world stone, and the world stone is of course used to create worlds. I know, um, very creative name, um, <laughs> but you know, it's like they were never able to create anything that lasted because when the demons controlled uh, the pandemonium fortress and they controlled the world stone, they would create endless worlds that would all give into chaos because, you know, that's, that's what, you know, the Lords of hell are. It's, it's a lot less of good versus evil more so than order versus chaos. And that the worlds were so chaotic and the, like basically the laws of physics and such were so out of whack that these worlds would 
um, implode upon themselves or like erupt or just like it would, whatever it is that they created destroyed itself and they wouldn't last. Uh, whereas when the angels would go through and control the world stone, they would create worlds that were so strict and orderly that they were stagnant and that they would not have any life and they would just die off because there was no change. There was no evolution or, or life that to actually breathe into these, into these worlds. And so they would just become stagnant, die off and then be forgotten by the, uh, the angelic host. And that's one of those things is like, could, could we potentially go and see some of these, some of these places, you know, um, and even just going back and like after the world stone was destroyed, um, you know, uh, at the end of Diablo two, before Diablo three was released, the story itself was focused a lot more on the world stone than the black soul stone and the Nephilim. But that storyline was kind of scrapped. I wonder if we might go back and see some more portions of that, like, um, because Metzen really hinted at that you can't destroy the world stone. This is a fundamental part of creation. Its physical representation might have been obliterated, but you can't destroy the essence, you know, um, eye of the world stone or the uh, eye of Anu. That it, it's still there, it still exists, but maybe it's taken another form. Um, you know, could this correlate into something that uh, a Nephilim? got control or got a hold of the uh, the world stone for a little bit and has been out there creating a couple worlds you know for like the last like 20 near 20 years last 40 years however time, long of the time period it takes between Diablo 2 and Diablo 4 I I do I do greatly expect that if it is Diablo 4 that the timeline of events itself will take place after um, our Nephilim heroes in Diablo 3 have passed on, you know, so that way it'd be like, well, why doesn't the Nephilim go and just save us instead of these guys? Well, well they're dead. You know, it's like 100 years later and they are they are just human after all. Um, so that's uh, that's some of my thoughts about where they, they might be taking it or some possible venues that they might be taking it. Sorry, I'll, I'll take my lore your, hat off now. Your lore knowledge is much greater than mine. <laughs> One thing that intrigued me, and somebody just threw this out there on a whim, and I thought about it, because I, I, I played World... I don't even... I think for those of us that have invested any bit of time in World of Warcraft, probably invested a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, my God, I, there was once where I thought I lived there. But anyways, somebody said uh, World of Diablo. I would yes. buy that game in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. I would love it. Oh, my God. If you could, if you could port all of Diablo into a world of warcraft game like i would wander around that place for i mean i would pro and then uh pixie and this is a little bit uh crazy and beyond that but mm -hmm. uh diablo for the the oculus rift like you huh. put me in virtual <laughs> reality uh -huh. oh man i i actually i i, I pre-ordered an oculus rift um mm -hmm. give me diablo <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that, the possibilities. The, yeah, because who knows? I mean, when you go through and you create a new game, like the the options are kind of endless. It's like one of those like this. This would be like a really, really big question about how they might want to do it. Um, it. You know, is the is the genre of the isometric action RPG dead? You know, is the, is the, like Diablo three and Path of Exile like the last big hurrah for like this I isometric view? Uh, will we get something that's like a first person or like a third person over the shoulder, you know, type view for the game going forward? You know, especially if they if they might go in to use like the Overwatch engine. I remember when I first got on because I mean I played so much Diablo and Diablo two that when I first got on the Diablo three beta, like I remember thinking like wow, this feels like Diablo. Mm -hmm. And I, I was so happy with it. Like, I was so happy that it felt and played like Diablo. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't care. Like, obviously, I cared after the game started and it was so terribly hard. Uh, but it felt like Diablo. And I almost, like, I got, do I dare? I mean, obviously, if they're coming out with a new game, it's, it's years away soon, TM. Yeah. And it, it's like, will my love of Diablo have wandered again? And then the minute it comes back, will I have that love right back? I don't know, man, but Diablo four seems like er, Diablo something world of Diablo, obviously would be a massive game, yeah. um, but Diablo four in any shape or fashion or any Diablo world, given what they've got to work with and new age technology and the way that they've evolved as a company and, and company and everything that they've got going, like, yeah, I even joked earlier, like a Diablo Street Fighter type game. <laughs> yes, 
I, I, I would play uh, it. Like, I don't that, see it happening, but I would totally play it. That, that was that was actually like one of my favorite things that they had, they had teased as one of the April Fool's jokes was a uh, was it like a, a Blizzard Fighters game. You know how how amazing would that be? I would play it. <laughs> Hell yeah. It. Hell, you know, it's like Blizzard versus Capcom. Let do it. <laughs> I mean, like that—that that needs to happen. I need to be like Rainer, you know, fighting Ryu. It's like a, that'd be a dream come true. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, the that was one of those things. There was some talks, like there was a lot of the stuff from, you know, the um, uh, Blizzard North wanting Diablo three to have been. It was developed more from like an MMO perspective. Uh, and then Blizzard, I guess, kind of like switched it. Obviously, when they went, when they pulled everything in house, they switched it to you know another action RPG game. And there was some discussion. Maybe it could still be a uh, MMO. But then shortly before Diablo 3's release, they were really, really big on quelling any conversations at all about Diablo turning into um, an MMO. Uh, this was while Titan was being created. You know, and still being worked on. I'm not even sure if Titan had been announced at that point, or if it had like had the leaked information. And I guess well, Titan was never really officially announced. They always kept that one secret. And eventually, you know, some of the assets got used into Overwatch. Um, but I, I wonder with like the dwindling subscriber numbers on World of Warcraft, and just the fact that like no other MMO out there, um, at least you know, in like the uh, Western markets, you know, uh, North America, South America, uh, Europe, uh, have really been able to stick. Um, EverQuest Next just got canceled, you know. Um, so I don't know if we, we if we've also like passed the age of the MMO and like World of Warcraft is like the the last the big MMO that can actually like hold on and survive out there. There are, there are a bunch of others like Neverwinter, Star Trek online and such that do the free to play model very well, but don't have anything near the subscriber numbers to, uh, to compete or show with uh wow. But, you know, I guess maybe, maybe we might see not so much an MMO, but something more along the lines of like, maybe like guild wars so it's like a per, it's it's still a persistent world that you can go through and be a part of but still has all like those solo play elements to it but you can go back to town and you know see a couple thousand people like running around and interact with if there's any type of hint like i, I don't they would never hint about it at blizzcon they would just mm-hmm. straight up they would have like this large because I remember when they announced the 2015 BlizzCon lineup, and you saw that Diablo had like this tiny One little section. Yep. <laughs> and you're like, all right, not much is happening in Diablo. Yep. But if they have any chunk of time or whatever, it's not stuck in the corner this year. If we if we get the demo stations back and we actually have like a demo area back, it's like something's happening. Even We're if they don't something. have a demo, just like give me like the most. Did they even have it in the opening segment? I don't know if they did. Um, I there there wasn't anything new to announce, but I believe they did show like very very briefly like Diablo. Okay. I, I remember it was it was big. Um, because like the announcers were going through and talking about how, Hey, they didn't mention Diablo or something like that. <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe, we, maybe we can get something this year. That'll be like the only thing it, it, I feel, it, you know, this is again, another conversation I had with Riker in the sense that it takes years for games to be developed. It takes oh, yeah. years for certain things. I, so I honestly would, I would, I would still be a little bit surprised if they announced anything regarding a, uh, a Diablo four. Yeah. or anything along those lines like this it year just seems too soon yeah it, with you know with them just having hired an art director a couple months ago well they what i can't remember somebody pulled it up there were positions that were from a few months back i think la- like late summer early fall there was a mm-hmm. position and maybe that was around current diablo 3 stuff i don't know but um like you said i mean just they're just now and the, i the think it might have been like the tool, like the tools designer and an audio designer uh, I, I can't remember. The fact that the jobs are still posted, though, yeah, means that they don't have it set. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, clearly, there's work to be done uh, just in the hiring phase. They might already have stuff going, uh, certain concept stuff, but this year does seem a little soon. That's not going to stop me from hoping and wishing and that hopefully I get to go to BlizzCon for the first time this year, and hopefully they have a huge Diablo announcement. I mean, yeah. I've played... 
I, and I'll be playing Overwatch. I've played World of Warcraft. I've played. I never played Warcraft three. My brother did all that. I played Diablo two. Yeah. Played Diablo one. I played Starcraft. I I played Warcraft three and then went back to playing Starcraft. That was. <laughs> It's like I didn't like the hero system. I'll I'll take my zerglings, thank you. <laughs> I'll just play uh two hours before school every day. <laughs> <laughs> all all nerdy like. Uh good times, good times, good fond memories. It's always good to talk uh late nineties, early two thousands blizzard stuff with yeah. people because like I realize I'm a little bit I don't want to say I'm older, but I'm I'm old enough to remember these games well mm-hmm. and when they came out. I was because I actually just had my God. I'm gonna say this publicly, my 33rd birthday, so I'm old enough to remember all that stuff. So when Diablo first came out, I was 13, and that's a really big time, like when I was playing video games. So, yeah, well, you only have a year and a half on me, so <laughs> so it, it's cool to like talk old school like when you were talking about how you guys circumvented it at school i was like thank god we weren't the only i remember we would do that with sim city 2000 and, and doom oh gosh uh, yes <laughs> uh sim city 2000 that that was a very that was another one that ate up a lot of my like uh computer lab time and such before i got a That's computer yep <laughs> uh good times yep yeah, um, I guess uh, before we kind of move on to the the community section, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about, like the uh, the Diablo Four conspiracy speculation, or any other news topics that we might have um, uh, missed or skipped that you'd like to go back and mention? Um, no, I, I would say looking back on the notes, two point four point one. One thing I learned from two point four PTR, especially after I put in like ungodly amounts of hours in the first two weeks of that, then they have the rollback. We won't probably see a rollback this time, but it's very fluid. So anything that you're seeing on two point four point one, definitely best to keep an eye on stuff. Uh Riker, I'm not sure if he's still in the chat. He's been making videos. He updates his guides. He's got a huge jump on everything. Uh shout out to him because he puts in probably as much as much work as anybody. I know this mm-hmm. because we talk about it all the time. We were <laughs> both probably chatting last night, I think at two AM in the morning. Um two point four point one, man, just I, I, I love the fact that there's still a community for Diablo that sticks around and they'll be back for the patches. I love all aspects. Like you said, there's people that'll come back and play for a couple of weeks and then they'll go. Um I mean even even if you go to um you know, um, our Diablo, because it's not specifically Diablo 3, the vast majority of the content in there is D3, but you go back there now, um, because of the patch that was just released, and you still have, like, four <laughs> or five or, you know, six posts on the main page about Diablo 2, like, what class should I play, where's the cheapest that I can get the game, because I can't find my CD key, because no <laughs> one, you know, Diablo 2 is always that game where it's like, you know, you'd go through and you'd play it, like, for, like, six months straight, and then you'd, you'd stop, and you'd go on and other stuff and then you like learned about oh like a year later or two years later oh they came up with another patch for it or someone would just like <laughs> mention it or you'd be listening to like something on you know like uh like this is this is i don't know if you listen to this but this is like a real big throwback like big mog radio uh like old mm. internet uh video game internet uh radio stations and such and you'd hear tristan theme come on and be like i gotta reinstall this game now where's my cd key you always lost your cd key in that six months or year interim between the last <laughs> time that you played and so you had to go out and buy another copy um I, until I, until they allowed you to actually like save it to your um battle.net account online I was digging through some old, old emails referencing something. I have an email from like 2002 or 2003 where I emailed myself my Lord of Destruction. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's like a 13 year old email. I still have it. Uh, Yes, because it's a useful thing to have. You never want to misplace your Diablo 2 CD key. I actually was just going through and uh, chatting with um, a friend of mine back from like freaking high school days um because you know because of the patch and just he had a facebook update that was just like where's my freaking cd key um and it's like dude you've been able to register that to your your battle net account since like 2007 you know you, you need to you need to go and get with the times you know rebuy the game and then go online <laughs> and save it so that way you'll never lose it i bet um, the battle chest pack probably still costs like 30 bucks i, I think it actually is like still 40 or is 20 it really? or something like that wow. I, I i have to check this now diablo 2 <laughs> battle chest let's let's go through and see amazon has it for 
twenty dollars. Oh, nice. Yes, with free shipping for any order over forty nine. <laughs> uh, oh, they have an old. There's an oh. old version versus a new version. Listed. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because it's saying here Diablo Battle Chest new version in stock March twenty first. <laughs> Dang. So awkward. Yes. Oh, I miss those days. Yep. Uh, I wonder, I guess maybe the new version that they're actually going through and selling probably has like 1.14a uh, pre-patched onto it. I don't know. It says new version, but it's dated 2006. Yeah. The old version dated 2003. Yeah. I just remember... Like sold the, out too which is like the amazing thing the um the soundtrack oh was, you know i think what it is so amazing yeah. well no I, i'm not saying that i just remember one of the main reasons buying it was the soundtrack yeah i i think it's because in the new battle chess it does not include diablo one because the old, the original diablo 2 battle chest also included diablo the original diablo but the new ones don't Interesting. Yeah. Throwback. Uh, good old days. The good old days. And I probably and it, the other the, of course the other thing of going through and buying a new copy of Diablo two to play it again is as soon as you purchase the new copy for the CD key you find your old one. <laughs> Guaranteed. You'll go through and you'll like buy it and it's like I haven't bought it like a a CD based game in like forever. I do everything off of Steam or digitally now. Let me let me go and put this away in like a shelf somewhere and be like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, there's a CD. Darn. Awesome. Can I take it back? No. Uh, <laughs> opened it. Yep. And uh replay is actually in chat confirming the fact that the new one does not have Diablo one. And that's the, that's the difference between the two of them. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And just, I mean, it's like, wow, it's like they went through and they had, they had a new patch come out and Diablo two is sold out on Amazon. Pretty wild. So, yeah. I love it. Extremely. That's it's just crazy. Huh. As far as everything else goes, um I I, I I'm just I, I love the fact that there's more content. Two point four point one, it just continues me to or it allows me to continue playing. Everything still feels fresh, even if I'm still playing a lot of the same stuff just rehashed. It feels good. It feels good. Diablo 4 stuff that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm going to remain hopeful, and I'm going to hope that I make it to BlizzCon this year. I, I, I mean, going off of even with like no demo stations, a single panel, and only a little tiny place that people constantly went and referred to as being smaller than the bathrooms, <laughs> um, that last year was probably still like the I've I've been to um, like almost every BlizzCon except for uh, 2014 and 2005. I've been to every other one wow. since then. That was the greatest BlizzCon that I've ever been to. Bar none. Cool. So even even if um, it is the same thing, and you know we're sitting on the toilets because they moved it into the <laughs> restroom to expand the venue um, for the uh, the slaughtered cafe, in, it still is going to be an amazing experience regardless. And like what Riker said, we are all going to go for a drink at BlizzCon 2016. And yes, compare compare, uh, <laughs> Nolan, if you're watching this, we still love you. And then I will knock over people's drinks and have to rebuy the new ones. Uh, big long <laughs> stories and in jokes behind everything uh, that you that you can uh, go through and be, uh, 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 dang it, uh, initiated into. There we go. I forgot my um, words. And I'm sorry about the dog in the background. We we as some of you that follow me on Twitter know, uh, we've had a couple, uh, you know, kind of uh, pet deaths in the family and we got a new puppy and it is being trained and it is just being this is the first episode that i've recorded since we've gotten the uh, the new puppy and it is apparently wanting to make itself heard on the show as well it's got to be on there <clears throat> yeah it just it has to be much like your cat having to go come up and pop <laughs> up on stream you know since it, since you know it, he's kind of uh, locked in the bedroom in the back he he needs to make his presence known uh, vocally no, no matter what, at one point. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then now, uh, 
Dr. Uh, Dreadsythe is going through and saying, end a shot, see four shots of Jaeger, which goes back to another joke where I ask for a shot of Jaeger and they bring back a, like a full glass of Jaeger. And I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'll do it. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, with that, uh, we can go on to some community feedback. Um, we are going to keep it a little bit curt so that we will have, um, if we didn't, if we don't read your email tonight, uh, fret not, we will go back and check it next week, provided the stars align at this point and Leviathan and I, uh, can be on the show at the same time. Um, so, uh, we will... We will go through and uh, we'll go through and check it out. Uh, but a couple of the ones that I want to go through and hit up is stuff that have been sitting in our inbox um, for the last couple of weeks. Um, ever since I, I asked people to go through and send in uh, their their uh, where they're at in their seasonal goals, their seasonal journeys, and um, so I'm just going to go through and hit up a couple of these that have been sitting in there for a couple of weeks. Uh, I want to go through and read your stories. Uh, so that way, you know, the, the time and the effort you spent writing into us does, does not go to waste. Um, our first email is, uh, comes in from Mike. Uh, and he wanted to go through and say that he's been listening to uh, Westmarch workshop for a little, for over a month now, and he really enjoys it. Uh, not only is it entertaining, informative, but you guys are just nice or just nice down to earth guys. Aw. And, well, now our secret's out, and you know that we are, in fact, the same person. That's why we don't appear on the show at the same time. Um, you respect the fact that we're not elitists, even though you could be due to your talent level. I, I will defer that that will probably solely be Leviathan as far as the, being, the talent level being elitist. I, I am definitely a uh, much more uh, casual gamer. Um, in that respect and that he goes through and he watches Leviathan streams and talks with him. And, uh, he just loves watching uh, streamers play. Uh, but about, um, his, um, his journey, um, he started season five about five days ago, which would have been, uh, February 15th. So you can see how long we've had this email sitting here again, Mike, (laughs) sorry for taking so long, uh, to get to your email. Things will, will work out a lot better. Uh, I promise in the future. Uh, and he's really enjoying it. As I told Leviathan, listening to you guys in the workshop really fired me up to play a season. Uh, but if I'm completely honest, I got to have that stash tab, which has been a big motivation for a lot of people that didn't play seasons before wanting to go through and check out season five. Um, not able to commit the time it takes to be competitive, um, but I've also almost exclusively played solo over the past three years or so that I've been playing Diablo 3. The few times I have attempted to play public games, people have gotten, uh, people have generally been impatient and rude. So I got bored and discouraged and stopped playing regularly for a while, but recently I've become rejuvenated and I'm thoroughly enjoying this season. I'm already over Paragon 200 playing exclusively solo and can squeak through Torment 10, but uh, T8 is my comfort zone. I'm playing a Witch Doctor and I'm a little annoyed that Jade is the free set doesn't enjoy the play style, but that's okay. <laughs> um, other pieces are coming. And to c- conclude, I'd like to ask you to consider allowing me to join your clan. I've never been in a clan uh, before and would really, I feel like I'm missing out on an important and fun aspect of the gameplay. I, I do believe, I wasn't sure on what his uh, battle tag was, but I think he might actually be in the clan. I'd have to ask Steven to confirm that if Mike has gotten in or not. And if you hadn't gotten in, uh, I think I saw one of your previous emails, but yeah, just send in your battle tag. We were uh, much easier on the space now that we've hit the uh, mid-season lull, so people have kind of been coming and going. But yeah, there, there's, and this is one of those things that I always love hearing from the people that go through and write in um, that you know, if you're a solo player, that's that's perfectly fine. Not everyone needs to get to you know Paragon 1000 or Paragon you know 15 million or 3000 or what ha- or what has uh, what have you or people you know you know just going back on me being a casual gamer. I did not get Guardian last season. I know a lot of people are instantly going to unsub now and uh, never <laughs> watch or listen to me ever again. But you know, it's uh, I, I definitely understand that you have time commitments and stuff to other places. Uh, but if it's a game that you enjoy then by all means don't let don't 
compare like your achievements to that of others. If it's something that you're having fun doing, continue to do it and have fun. Um, and if we can get you in the clan or if you can join another clan and go from solo to being a group player or, you know, um, hop in uh, Discord or uh, your clan's team speak or whatever it is in order to go through and start playing with people, it really adds to the, uh, the fun and the excitement because uh, it's just like having that community aspect helps push you further. It helps push you higher because you have not just other people that are helping you but other voices that are cheering you on and makes you want to push for a little bit higher i um uh, i've traditionally been a, a solo diablo player for a very long time mm -hmm. I, I i personally love it i i'm re actually really surprised that there was um i don't know impatience like i love the diablo community like i yeah, you got your general people, but that that's really awesome that he, he did feel rejuvenated. I mean, Diablo is such a, it's a pick up and play whenever you want type thing. And whenever you have the passion to play it, I think it's really awesome that uh, he's able to pick it back up. Even after, I guess, a little bit of frustration. That's That's really cool. Yeah. No, it's it's always one. I mean, that's like this, like the history of Diablo. It's a game that you you go through, you play until you're burnt out. You put it down <laughs> for a little bit, an update comes out, and then you're back in. You know, it's like you, the the needle's back in the arm. I, I got to go through and get my fix now. You know, that's kind of just been the history of Diablo for forever. Um, the uh, next email we have sent in is from uh, Trauma Brew. Uh, and he wanted to say that he's been listening to the podcast for a while. And um, he wanted to say, with season five, I decided, I decided to step up from a casual player to a more serious player, albeit softcore. Perfectly fine. Definitely understand hardcore is not for everybody, but everybody should give hardcore a try at least once. Um, I've already eclipsed my previous season highest Paragon level and have even completed the seasonal journey all the way through Champion um, and uh, got my extra stash tab. So I guess that means you actually went above Champion and got um, Conqueror if you've gotten your extra stash tab now. Um <clears throat> Though he was left feeling daunted after listening to the show discussing the topic, uh, sorry if uh, if, they, if we uh, drummed it up too much. <laughs> um, but I am now taking my item drops a lot more serious and have noticed some items are super rare, even to the point that I've not seen one drop. Case in point, I have seen one Akras awakening, awakening drop for me, despite the thousands upon thousands of shards spent and the greater rifts that I have run. I have seen countless other shields, um, but they are all useless for me as I am running invokers. Are some items uh, really intentionally super rare, or I am the butt of an RNG <laughs> god's joke? Uh, <laughs> some pieces seem to be the linchpin for a set, but are quite exclusive. Intentional or not? I'm not sure. I can see making some items less common than others to get people to grind them out, uh, but that can have a double-edged sword and cause people to get burnt out and quit. Along the line of gear not dropping, I have also hit a DPS wall. I can solo up to greater of 60 and maybe a little higher, but that's it. I just don't have the DPS to clear higher. I have min-maxed my gear as best as I can. I can't level... Excuse me. I can't level my gems higher they are, uh, than they are since I can't get into higher, greater rifts, and my paragon level progression is slowed due to this issue as well. I play solo as I do not have any clans. Uh, I'm trying to get into public games, uh, but they're doing um, that goes higher than greater rift 65. Is this unheard of? Any tips? Um, and un unfortunately, uh, of course, you know, our Crusader expert, uh, Steven, uh, isn't here in order to go through and give any tips or advice. Uh, but if you do want to get some more tips, um, send us in a link to your player profile so that way we can take a look at your gear and we might be able to go through and uh, give you some pointers. Albeit this email is a couple weeks old and you might have already went through and um, pushed it. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, yes, there are some items that are excruciatingly rare, uh, Akarat's Awakening being one of them. Uh, that's kind of in that upper echelon tier. Uh, and all the time that I have played uh, a Witch Doctor, like I have never once found an SMK. Uh, mm -hmm. And they, they just, there are certain items that are super rare. And it's unfortunate when they are kind of a, a, a linchpin for a specific build. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can do to get, get around that. Obviously, you can go through uh, for the super rare items. Unfortunately, I think for the shield, it doesn't really matter um, uh, as much. Uh, it doesn't really take out a lot of the RNG, but you also want to be focusing all of your... Um, 
uh, sorry, uh, you want to be focusing all of your death's breaths into combining up uh, shields, uh, specifically crusader shields, to try and get um, that one um, uh, made for you. Uh, just uh, because, you know, obviously dumping the blood shards, but also dumping uh, your um, death's breaths in the cube to try and cube up rare uh, rare crusader shields and to try and get the uh, Akarat's awakening. Um, and once we see like your gear and your setup, uh, we'll be able to go through and maybe give you some better pointers. But there, it definitely is intentional, and it does kind of suck when those when those very specific items like like an SMK uh, are just super rare and extremely hard to get a hold of. You feel like you're not able to push your one particular spec. Um, but uh, the devs have actually addressed that a couple of times. I know uh, John Ying has talked about it. Uh, Wyatt has talked about it. Um, that that they're okay with it because you'll have other drops, especially with uh, you know 2.4 bringing a lot of sets up to similar power levels and you might only be a little bit behind. Um, going from one set to the next. It does suck if you have your heart set specifically on this one set, but you know, through just regular gear drops and such, you should have other things open up to you to go and play different specs that you might be able to uh, get fully complete, have all the items for easier, and then that allows you to get to the, the next highest level, and eventually you might have that other item drop for you so you can go back to the other spec that you enjoyed playing and playing at its highest potential. I think the, the uh, cube idea has been a huge thing for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This I I know. Uh, what is it? This is uh, going through in. Uh, I think it was you know through cubing uh, that I managed to find my uh, Manticore for my Marauders build. Uh, you know, because I was just like going back and forth. You know, it's like well, I've got all these ancient. Um, um, unhallowed essence pieces. So let me. I, I was putting my shards into two handers to hopefully gamble for both. But then I was putting my death's breaths into uh, crossbows specifically because I, I wanted to play Marauder. It's not unhallowed essence. So it's just one of those ones where it kind of like was kind of juggling between what it is that I wanted to play. But that, that also goes back. You know, it's like my luck at the beginning of the season uh, was all unhallowed essence. Um, uh, until I finally was able to um, cube up a uh, ancient manticore, um, but besides that, you know everything else at the, the game has been dropping. Is just like, well, here's some here's ancient unhallowed essence pieces. Ancient unhallowed essence pieces will even drop you like a uh, an extremely well rolled hell, ancient hellfire amulet with uh, like a call the week <laughs> passive, so that way you can go and continue to play um, unhallowed essence with a fire mod on it. And it's just like, oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it might take some time. You might see yourself, you know, swapping between uh, specs here and there. But uh, just just keep at it, keep playing, and eventually the item will drop. It's like the the big thing. It's just like the more you play, the uh, more of a chance you'll have. Bring back double socket Manticore. Uh, I wish that would be ah, uh, that would be beautiful. It would be the dream that, right now. That would that would definitely be the dream right now. <laughs> uh, bring back double socket Manticore. And uh, bring back um, uh, or add in more weapon legendary gems, por favor, if if you would not mind. I would uh, I would definitely appreciate that. I must say. That would be good. Yep. Uh, our next email, uh, this one comes in from uh, Murphy. Wanted to say where he's at in season five. Um, it's, uh, he wanted to say, I'm ahead of where I need to be, but not where I wanted to be. Uh, but there's still two months left. This is coming in at the end of February. Uh, I did manage to get my stash tab. I also have gotten more Paragon levels than I have on my non-seasonal character. Congratulations. Uh, my goal is to have a combined Paragon level of 800 at the close of the season. And right now my combined experience is 721, uh, according to the Paragon calculator that I've been using. Uh, now to the gripes that uh, I may have about what I've come across in the season so far. Uh, my main is a Crusader, playing Invokers, and I'm doing good, but I feel my solo damage is just not there to push higher greater rifts. My best is level 61, so you seem to be in a similar predicament of um, our, uh, our previous uh, emailer, um, but level 55, 65 is where he feels comfortable. 
unless I get the uh, the right mobs and pylons, I can fail a 58 uh, and might get one or four, uh, might get uh, one in four to complete that, just so that way I can level a gym. Uh, I'm uh, I'm close on them most of the time, like maybe a minute or two off, and trying to get help in public games uh, in the form of communities. Um, uh, such as uh, such as uh, West Marsh Workshop or uh, Rikers Raiders and others, uh, as I've been about uh, Blizzard. Uh, uh, um, but I would like Blizzard to focus more to stop botting. Um, but the chances in that one are slim. <laughs> uh, I did change some of my play style this season to try and accomplish my goals. One being I played more public games uh, to get into rifts and bounties. The rifts are still hard for me, but I hate uh, trying to keep up with the speed demons on my crusader. Uh, it's not too bad, but I have a good bit of toughness, and I just run till I can get uh, till I can catch up with the wizard, um, and just uh, store what I find. Um, uh, and t- sorry, uh, the grammar is a little bit rough there. Uh, but then he also will go through and play a wizard and store what he finds. Um, even though he has one third the health, uh, and the mobs will kill him in one or two shots, but it just allows him to keep up with the other players in the game. Uh, when he's playing public games, it takes a lot of the fun out of it. Uh, my remaining goals for the season is to try and complete the final level of the seasonal journey. He's currently two out of six on it. Um, I just cannot have or have not found the, the help with the ones that I do not have uh, or the ones that I need to complete solo. Greater Rift 70 solo is all on me, and in time, hopefully, I will be there. And if it is, it's the only one that I don't get, I'll be okay with it. Um, uh, but the, the level 3 gems to 65, the third conquest, I hope that I can find some help with. I'm currently leveling in uh, and gearing a Crusader on Hardcore to go after the, uh, the, 50, million, um, the 50 million goal, the Avarisha, um, as my third conquest. And if I can get a lot of that, li- if I can get a lot of the life vitality and gold find gear, and just a little bit of luck in a Torment 10 Rift with the Goblin Pack, uh, that I should be able to get that 50 million to happen easily. And yeah, I mean, even before Torment 10, you might just accidentally stumble across it. So best of luck on that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a similar situation. I believe that I am currently, I, I myself with my seasonal goals, I am four out of six for Guardian. I just need to get um, a third conquest and... Uh, I forget the other one. I think as I need to finish leveling up my three gems to 65, and that's about it. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I definitely feel you on, you know, where you feel you're further ahead, but kind of still want to get there. And uh, I wish you the best of luck on trying to get up there. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, uh, thought about sending in an app to join the Westmarch Workshop besides just the community itself, but by all means, go ahead and uh, throw us an application so we might be able to get in there and help you out. The uh, next one here, uh, this one is coming in from uh, Osmodius, a longtime listener. Thanks for writing in again. Uh, he wanted to go through and say uh, that uh, his goals coming into the season were to reach Paragon 750, make the leaderboards top 1,000 for Demon Hunters, nothing too lofty, and earn to earn that sweet, sweet extra stash tab. <laughs> As of last night, I'm sitting at Paragon 684. Given that this was a couple weeks ago, I imagine you probably are already at Paragon 750. Uh, actually, he has an update on here. So he has reached Paragon 750. Uh, he's cleared a Greater Rift 69. In his update, he says that he has finally completed a Greater Rift 70. So he got that out of the way as well. Uh, put him somewhere at the time at around par- uh, around 500 on the Demon Hunter leaderboards. Despite the inclusion of the, f- the nefarious set dungeon mastery requirement, um, I have uh, already earned the extra stash tab. And he's 5 of 6 on his last season journey. The last one being the level 70 to solo it so he's now actually completed his uh, guardian journey or guardian uh, step on the seasonal journey so congrats on that Oz um, he failed a couple of tries but he's going to continue on with it as he's already said he's went through and completed it and he's currently working um, on finalizing his uh, Marauder's Demon Hunter to see just how far he can push with it considering his highest solo at the time of this email which was just last week was level 71 um, and he wants to make sure that he remains on the leaderboard for the end of the season. So congrats to you, man. Nice. Uh, 
Sorry, just signing the other one here. Um, and our, our last email for the evening uh, comes in from Ruak. I uh, just wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, Westmarsh Workshop in the clan. Loves the show and he loves being part of the clan. Uh, back when season four was finished, you asked a question about us reaching our season four goals. And I'm finally getting around to send you an email about that. So this one's coming in uh, a little bit late for uh, season <laughs> four. And we're reading it even later, which just expounds the problem. Um, that he finished everything in season four except for Guardian. And I know uh, for some that clearing that Greater Rift 60 solo was just uh, not... Uh, was just uh, was not their uh, hard cap, but it was for me. My best was 59. I feel you on that one. I got like Greater Rift 60 like the day before the season ended, and then I died leveling my gems to try and get the rest of it. Um, I thought of this. I thought about this during our season break. And I realized that I'm the kind of person who will go for a goal if it is easily reachable, and by that I mean something that doesn't require a ton of effort on my part. I then realized I do this in real life as well. And realized it's probably a big reason why I'm somewhat overwhelmed or underwhelmed with my life right now. Long story short, I quickly began applying for jobs. I uh, would want, even if it meant more. Uh, that applying for jobs I would want even if it meant more work and more hours began eating healthier and so now I'm working two jobs enjoying both of them I'm eating better and I'm healthier than what I'm used to I have uh, set some goals for myself and I re that now require work to be done and it's cool seeing how progress is forming and I feel more accomplished um, as far as season five uh, I'm a normal non-hardcore crusader running Thords is similar to Leviathan I do not really like the play style of the Legacy of Nightmares Bombardment build, which was a big complaint that Leviathan had for the longest time as well. Uh, I'm also running a hardcore wizard to play with a friend of mine, uh, but I've not played since uh, that I've not played since Reaper launched. Uh, and uh, when he found out I was playing, he started back up, but he only plays hardcore, so we've been having fun with that. My goal for Season 5 is to be more talkative in clan chat and a bit more social in gaming instead of my usual hermit self. To clear Greater Rift 70 um, in softcore and Greater Rift 50 in hardcore solo. While leveling my wizard, I found um, an unstable scepter, and wow did that thing change my build. I'm loving it so much right now. Uh, best to everyone in the workshop and at BlizzPro, and happy season journeying. From Ruak. That is an awesome email. Yeah, uh, that's that's, awesome. yeah, that's one of those ones you don't really quite expect to hear about. Uh, you know, a video game going through and changing your life. But if it's something like, well, I always play. You know, so you know, I I don't like putting effort into things. And if it makes you stop and reflect, well, shit, I don't like putting effort into anything. I need to change that. <laughs> well, damn, this this would make an excellent novel to like go back and write or something like that. Like. Like just like a little like mini biography, how Diablo <laughs> three seasons changed my life, Season you know, five. yeah, or Diablo <laughs> changed my life. It can change yours. Um, <laughs> normally, people would kind of expect a, uh, a email like that or a novel like that about how you know like I got addicted to gaming and then my like, life went to shit. I lost my job and my wife left me and such, you know, because of the addictions and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, not this time. Not this time. We had a member of the Diablo 3 community just retire. Uh, yes, this is true. This is true. Uh, I, I, did, I, we, we didn't add that into the show notes. I feel so bad now. Yeah, um, uh, Meathead Mickey L um, uh, just retired from gaming to go back in and focus on his family. Which I think is a great... Re like I think anybody that's probably played... Diablo, World of Warcraft, or any of these games, you've probably found yourself sitting there probably a little longer than you should. Mm -hmm. like, you lose track of time. You don't think there's anything wrong with it. And then you realize you're getting the cold shoulder, or that stink eye as you walk back out of your cave or your away from your computer. Yep. And to refocus on things and for him to do that, I think is, you know, I'm sure that there might have been some pressure. I think we've all probably experienced it at some point. But for him to recognize that and to be able to focus on um, his life and the things that really matter, you know, good for him, man. Good for him. 
Yeah, and it's one of those things that it's you know it's always it's always been a saying in like every clan or WoW guild or gaming group that I've ever been in. You, you know, it like come especially when you're like in a hardcore raiding guild, it can really suck like when your main tank doesn't log on. But you know, uh, real life before everything. You know, so if it's something you know that you need to take a stop, you know, take a break, and you realize that it's just consumed your life too much. I mean, even uh, Leviathan Steven, uh, just last year, you know, for the brief period of time when he uh, left the show, um, you know, you know, because he just he had to stop. He was going through and controlling too much of his life. He had to he had to realize that he had to stop, put the brakes on, and kind of like step back. Because it's one of those ones, especially when it's something that like might be detrimental to your life, and you're always like, well, well, why can't you just like step back a little bit like slow down not consume as much if it's something that you're like actively is like detrimental because you're putting so much time and effort into it it's hard to continue to maintain that you know kind of uh, quote unquote addiction um in like refocus it's not it's it's a difficult thing to deal with and so sometimes you just have to cut it out completely you know maybe hopefully we'll see uh, meathead come back at um some point in the future and you know come back and you know rejoin the the community uh when he can you know uh like would just uh better refocus or split his time and such in between doing stuff it can you be know, tough man. And I, such. I think we've all been there yeah, oh it yeah can be tough. it can it be definitely tough. It, it is one of those ones where you have to like kind of like uh, stop and take a look, and it's like, uh, what am I doing? Where am I going? Is this the best thing for me or not? And so, yeah, we'll go through and best of luck, uh, you know, um, to everyone, you know, that might be suffering from uh, an issue like that. Yeah, um, and with that, that will bring us to a close of our uh, community feedback, and if that will bring us to everybody's favorite, Items of the Week. Um, I got a sneak peek. <laughs> that man, he did. There is one item that is going to blow you guys away. I mean, it, from, from top to bottom, it, one of the best items I think I've ever seen in the game. And, and and here it is as he's going through and talking about it we just i just this was one that i did have to go through and just show open it with this one sorry for everyone else that has sent in um items of the week but um i, I think this is probably just one of like the, the greatest things that we've ever shown on the show uh this is a marauder's visage a ancient um demon hunter helm and just you know for the the people that aren't watching live the people that aren't on youtube uh, that have seen this already without me having to go through and read the stats. Uh, for those on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, what have you, just listening to the audio, um, if you're not sitting down, please do. And you're like, how can you be so excited over something like a helmet? You know, normally people get excited over weapons, but this this item, well, just just prepare yourself. Okay, so primary stats rolled with 1,000 dexterity, max. 1,000 vitality max, and has been re-rolled to increase critical uh, hit chance by 6% max. Beautiful. I mean... And how, it has it, arcane resistance on it, the secondary. Yeah, arcane resistance on the secondary. So one of, one of the better ones that you can get that's going to go through and like kind of like stop you in your tracks from either arcane beams or one of the few things uh, that can stop you as marauders with a uh, jailer. And then, of course, you know, for your experience farming groups, monster kills XP by 250, 59 experience. And, of course, the socket, because it wouldn't be, wouldn't be anything without a socket. But it doesn't doesn't stop there. It's like, we just went through <laughs> all of the stats, and it's like, well, how can it get even better? The armor that the item rolled is 666. The I mean, it gets, it's that is just beautiful. This is, like, poetic. This item is just, like, I don't know. I, I would say it's godly, but it has 666 armor, so it's diabolical. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's, just, it's just beautiful. This thing is just, like amazing uh i saw that on the tweet earlier and i was like no way yeah no as soon way. as as soon as that uh came in and I, I i almost forgot i'm like so excited by this item it's like it was sent in via twitter uh by sir dave um which i want to say is the one that gave us the tip about the whole diablo 4 thing i if i'm incorrect about that please um smack me um somehow yeah, i'm sure you'll find a way <laughs> to physically assault me through tcpip um but anyways, yeah, this thing is just 
beautiful, godly. This uh, and this just came in a couple hours ago. I had as soon as I saw that come up uh, on my Twitter feed, I, I had to retweet it. Um, and of course include it in to answer Sir Dave, to answer your question with the tweet. Yes, we do in fact still have an items of the week section. Um, <laughs> and we are definitely showing your item, um, on the show. So, um, damn, damn. <laughs> But unfortunately, we do have to move on and show uh, some other people's items um, at some point. Uh, this item was sent in. Uh, this is an ancient wand of woe uh, sent in by Andrewus. Um, and this uh, beautiful item uh, wand is clocking in at 3,050 DPS, was rolled with 9%. It came with 9% uh, weapon damage, 910 intelligence, was re-rolled to include, uh, reduces the cooldown of all skills by 10%, uh, increases explosive blast damage by 89%, the secondary uh, a, uh, affix of 13 maximum arcane power, and the legendary property, of course, of triggering three additional arcane uh, or explosive blasts after casting explosive blasts with a Romilati Ding Dongs uh, for a socket. So yeah, that so that beautiful. I would love that. Yeah, I'm sure that there are many wizards out there that are extremely jealous and wish that they had it. You know, to go back and uh, you know answer another question. This is also an extremely rare item uh, that not many people have the uh, the pleasure of even seeing, let alone an ancient one of uh, such stature. You talked about the SMK. It was uh, probably about two or three weeks ago. I was streaming and I was on my wizard. I had never gotten a wand of woe. I got one. Blew mm -hmm. my mind. And I kid you not, I think it was only two or three hours later, I got a second one. I'd never gotten one before, and I get two uh, during one stream. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that that kind of is, uh, uh, what remote. is it, like back, yeah, like back in season one, I went through and was desperately trying to find a Tasker and Theo. And of course, sure enough, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the season two PTR, what's one of the first legendary gloves that drops? Tasker and Theo, and Theo. <laughs> uh, as, as it had become useless and was no longer required for the uh, Marauders build. It was oh, just like, oh bad, gosh, man. really does, really does. Um, our next item, this one was sent in by uh, Ghost Chill. Uh, he wanted to send in this uh, Stall Guards Decimator. Don't see a lot of these, but it r came with a very high DPS, a lot of good stats. Uh, as an ancient two-handed weapon, is just helping him go through and uh, carry him in. Uh, this one rolled with 4,303 DPS. He has uh, re-rolled 9% uh, damage on the weapon. I'm sure probably by the time uh, that this uh, show uh, reaches his ears, he will probably have thrown in the last bit of Death's Breaths in order to get this up to that uh, full 10% weapon damage. But it also came with 1,322 Strength, 1,449 uh, Vitality, and the secondary property of 2.7% Chance to Fear, with the legendary uh, ability that your melee attacks have a chance to throw a Piercing Axe at nearby enemies, dealing 633% weapon damage as physical, with Ronald McDonald's uh, added in for a socket. So definitely a nice, uh, nice high DPS weapon to go through, and you know this is this is like this is like you know we mentioned this many times that so this is a great thing you know to get you through to help you out, especially towards the beginning of the season or if you haven't played too much into the season, and then you can always use the cube to add on whatever you know legendary fix that you might need um, in order to make your build work until you can actually get like your full combo. But it it opens up a lot of possibility where you just need like an ancient weapon to deal damage and then you can rely upon the cube to get the affix that, that is needed um and as we were talking about earlier you know speaking of star metal kukris uh we've got this one sent in by a longtime listener mad hamster uh sent in this ancient star metal kukri it makes my recently uh leveled 70 witch doctor extremely jealous especially the fact, the fact that i've never even seen one of these drop i, I begin to question whether it actually exists within the game <laughs> Uh, and this one uh, rolled with uh, 2,923 DPS. He has uh, re-rolled it for 10% uh, weapon damage. It came with 827 intelligence, increases critical strike damage by 33%, uh, increases maximum mana by 124, uh, and of course the legendary property of reduces cooldown of fetish army and big bad voodoo by one second for every time your fetishes deal damage with uh, another Ronald McDonald's for a socket. Um, I, I do wonder though whether the I, I don't know what else it had rolled that made you want to go with the 10% weapon damage, but I I'm not sure if the attack speed bonus 
would be uh, better or worse with the rest of the damage rolls on this uh, item, you know, given it's mainly used for pet builds. It's the, I, I would still take that. The weapon, the base weapon damage. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, I, that's a good look. I, I got my first SMK from somebody in a group that gave me one, and that was just a couple months ago. Yeah, that that is like one of those ones that constantly happens to me where I will be in a group, log off, and like 30 minutes later, the <laughs> item that I was looking for dropped. Like uh, Leviathan, it was like one of those things uh, back in season four uh, towards the beginning that it was kind of almost a joke that, you know, um, as soon as I logged off, Leviathan was going to find a furnace. <laughs> yeah. because it's like it happened like four times I logged off and like an hour later he found a furnace and it's like an ancient furnace at that and it's just like oh well great thanks uh, um, and for this one uh, our next item uh, was sent in by uh, Kevin uh, he does say sorry he's still figuring out how to go through and do screenshots in game so he had to take a picture um, of his monitor so forgive the uh, fuzziness um, in his reflection at least you know, it's not one of those like terrible Craigslist or eBay photos. He is wearing clothes um, in his reflection, so thank you for that, Kevin. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, there is a print screen button on your keyboard, and there in your uh, I think it's under Documents, or there should also be a shortcut um, in your My Pictures folder that will take you to your Diablo screenshot uh, folder on your computer, so that way you can go and find them. Uh, when you go to send them in. Um, but uh, this is an ancient uh, Yang's recurve that came with 3,618% uh, weapon damage. Uh, he's re-rolled uh, 10% um, bonus. Uh, he's re-rolled 10% weapon damage. Came with 884 dexterity. Increases attack speed by 6%. Reduces all resource costs by 44%. He's, uh, he's uh, augmented it uh, through the queue by sacrificing a level 60 gem to add 300 uh, bonus dexterity onto the item. With the secondary properties of uh, 12 maximum discipline and the legendary bonus of multi-attacks attack 50% faster with Ronald McDonald's for a socket. Um, but yes, that, that is a very, I'm still waiting for my, um, ancient Yang's recurve to come in for my, uh, speed farming build. So I, I am a bit jealous, you know, on this item, especially that I have not actually augmented like any of my gear I'm um, with you. for this season. I, I haven't had as much time to, uh, as much time to play despite the fact that, you know, it's like, I, I've been, you know, out of a job for the, uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a bunch of other stuff and finishing up some projects. And if you follow my Twitter, you've seen pictures of me going out into the Everglades and finding alligators, eating snakes and, uh, thing, <laughs> things such as that. Um, but I, I did, I guess, you know, the minor update since we didn't do like a week in gaming, we, I guess we completely skipped that. And that's my bad. Uh, I did recently find a job, so I'm, I'm reemployed. So free time is now kind of gone, but I'm still going to be here. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, definitely a beautiful um, Yang's recurve that I am extremely jealous and wish I had one. So that way I can try and get those like sub one minute torment 10 clears so I can get back to greater rift farmings. Um, this next one comes in from, you know, uh, one, one, a, a personal favorite of mine is this one sent in from Og Childs. <laughs> Beautiful name. I don't know why I didn't, you know, grab that name with a uh, Smurf account to begin with, but yep. Um, he sent in an in, uh, uh, in ancient Aquila Kuras. Um, uh, this, uh, this baby rolled 650 strength, 646 vitality, and a 14% life, so near-perfect rolls on all of them. Uh, he's using it for his Invoker's Crusader, so for the secondary bonus, you know, instead of going for trying to grab um, all resist or something instead of a life percentage, he re-rolled the secondary bonus for thorns, so that way he'd get the 8,719 thorns damage. And it rolled that while above 90% primary resource, all damage taken is reduced by 50%. And of course, uh, sockets um, on the item uh, with a whole bunch of uh, diamonds thrown in there uh, for uh, resist. Cause I believe this is like, uh, he's been, ha he's not been having the best of luck. This is an email that we'll, we'll read in a future episode, but just, I guess, spoilers, he's not had the best of luck keeping characters alive lately. 
Um, just a uh, just little, little minor spoiler of things to come and emails to be read in the future. But this is definitely a very well-rolled, uh, very beautiful Aquila. That's pretty amazing. Yep. Um, next, to continue on with some just drool-worthy um, Demon Hunter gear, uh, this is a pair of uh, uh, Shadows Grasp, the Shadows uh, Set Gloves, sent in by Andy. Uh, this one rolled with 975 Dexterity, 843 Vitality, Critical Hit Damage increased by 50%, Critical Hit Chance increased by 10%, uh, increases uh, Golden Health Globe pickup range by 2 yards and a 4% chance to stun on hit. Uh, this is definitely a, a extremely beautiful item. Being able to get perfect rolls for both hit da uh, critical hit damage and critical hit chance um, on this item, and it's not been touched. Nothing's been re-rolled on it. So it's one of those ones where it's like I'd, I'd almost uh, be tempted, depending upon kind of like what the rest of your gear looks like, of uh, maybe re-rolling the uh, um, one of the secondary properties into like a useful resist like physical or arcane or maybe even re-rolling the vitality into uh, cooldown reduction um, depending upon what the rest of your gear looks like and how easy you have it um, reaching that that 37 percent chance or 37 percent uh, cooldown reduction um, to get the permanent uptime on vengeance the fact that that rolled with that stun on there it's pretty awesome yeah, that that is that is really big, especially you know with um, well I guess uh, shadows doesn't really use uh, Zai's that much, does it? Um, shadows is uh, in a weird spot still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's it's getting a lot of love on the PTR right now, but isn't isn't quite what everyone hoped or expected it to be yeah. uh, once it went live. But it's still, because they made it one of the playable ones that the streamers used at BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. And it was like one of the Demon Hunter sets that they were allowed them to show off. And it yeah. didn't quite pan out the way they wanted it to at that time. Yeah, no, it was, it was the one that you know received the extra pieces, was getting the huge revamp and such. And so it was a big talk of the town, but you know, it, Shadows has its, uh, has its issues. <laughs> um, yeah, that's still a beautiful, beautiful item. Uh, coming in, uh, another longtime listener that we have uh, from Corova here um, sent in, you know, our traditional, uh, you know, ancient furnace. You know, we get them, we have to show them. Uh, you sent in this one via Twitter. This ancient furnace is clocking in at 3,703 DPS. It got uh, 1,372 intelligence, 1,463 vitality, uh, chance to deal area damage by 17%. 4.2% chance to blind and increases the damage against the leaves by 41%. Uh, and he went through and said, it's unfortunate that such a beautiful item is immediately going into the cube. So, you know, rest in peace, this item as it no longer exists and is now a fond memory inside of a, uh, inside of Corova's Kanai's cube. Which, you know, like, you know, how dominant the furnace used to be. And of course, it's just like a long time running joke on the show about we, we always were asking for people to send an ancient furnace. And as long as they sent in an ancient furnace, we would show it on stream. And we continue to do it to this day. Um, where if you send in multiple items and we only pick one, we're picking the furnace, just so you know. Sorry if, if you, you actually sent in an item <laughs> you wanted shown. We're, we're just going to show the ancient furnace, even though it's not what it used to be. In the few specs that still use it, it's kind of relegated to the cube nowadays. Uh, continuing on... Um, this one comes in. We read an email from Osmodius earlier. He wanted to send this one in. Uh, Crashing Rain. He says he's a season behind in uh, you know going through and showing off you know this awesome item. Uh, but this ancient Crashing Rain clocked in with 645 dexterity, 578 vitality, 122 resistance to all elements. Was re-rolled for 14% life. Um, has a 2.2 chance to freeze on hit and the. Uh, Legendary affix of Reign of Vengeance also summons a Crashing Beast that deals 3,972% weapon damage. Not the best that we've uh, seen on the show, but uh, a damn good roll. Um, especially if it's something that you want to go through and you know have fun and play Natalia's, but it, it kind of sucks that the, uh, that the preferred strafe bill is now Legacy of Nightmares as opposed to uh, Nats. That's uh, still a pretty awesome 
crashing rain right there. I would that it jump is. on that. I remember getting an ancient one and it had like 3,200% weapon damage. Oh, yeah. And, and I was like, oh. That uh, was like the, the first couple that I found were like 31. You know, it was like 3,100% weapon damage <laughs> or something, uh, you know, thereabouts uh, that. And I finally found one uh, that was like 37 uh, 3,700 percent weapon damage. Which is like, oh, okay, now I can really make those build tick. Uh, yeah, this is this is one of those items that it's like that 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 ancient property, it, you know, is what makes or breaks the item. That it is definitely worth using a non-ancient piece, um, if you have a much better roll, just because it has that that thousand percent damage um gap between like the worst being three thousand and the best being four thousand it's pretty large <laughs> yes very much so uh and we're coming into our final item of the week here this one is another ancient yang's recurve this one's sent in by peter uh this one rolled uh three thousand one hundred ninety seven dps it came with 10% uh, weapon damage, 906 dexterity, reduces all resource costs by 50%. Uh, monster kills grant 254 experience, and of course, legendary property of uh, multi attacks, uh, multi shot attacks 50% faster uh, with a socket. And now, his question that he had, you know, when he sent in with this item, is the way that it rolled is for him to go through and use this because it's an upgrade for him. Um, over what he was using previously is that uh, would it be more beneficial to roll the socket into cooldown reduction um, or to roll the secondary bonus into discipline for the damage? And this is one of those ones where it's like, you know, as as huge as that 10% cooldown reduction on the weapon is, if you can get that, if you can get the 37% uh, cooldown reduction uh, via, you know, like shoulder, quiver, and rings, uh, I, I you know, getting getting that max discipline on there uh, would be huge as far as like your uh, your damage bonus goes. That would be the, the probably the most the damage that you could eke out of it if you can get to the thirty seven percent cooldown reduction on the other items. I, th I think though, given now the fact that they just bumped up the discipline bonus from twenty to forty percent, mm -hmm. like you absolutely have to roll discipline on there yeah i mean it is, it's definitely a no-brainer once we get into the next patch yeah. um you know but for uh, you right now i i would i would definitely still uh push you towards you you want to get that 37 percent cooldown reduction for the permanent uptime on vengeance and then to get the most out of this item uh re-rolling that monster xp into the discipline because it's just it's that's where so much damage you know from the unhallowed essence set comes from uh, in order to get it, you know, you, you won't have your full, you know, five stats on the weapon, you know, because you weren't able to use uh, a Rob Melody's gift on it, uh, you know, but, you know, if you're just going to be going through and using like Unhallowed Essence, you know, to speed run Torment 10 or what have you, uh, then it I mean, it will be more than, uh, more than sufficient in order to go through and get on that. And uh, that will bring us to an end of the items of the week and the end of our community feedback section. Um, so if you want to, if you want to have your items featured, or if you want to have your uh, emails uh, read on the show, uh, please go through and send us an email at westmarchworkshop at blizzpro.com, uh, so that way we can go through and you know read your comments, feedback, show off your items. Um, and, you know, speaking of how we can be reached, uh, you can always, again, you can always email us any of your thoughts or ideas at westmarksworkshop at blizzpro.com. Uh, you can also follow the show. We're at, it's at the WM Workshop on Twitter. Um, if you want to go through and tweet to us your ideas or your, uh, your items. And of course, you know, you can join us here for the, uh, the live stream. We stream every Wednesday night at twitch.tv slash blizzpro. Uh, we go live at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, and while you're here, go ahead and click the follow button. Uh, and go and check out the other awesome shows that we have to offer. Uh, on Sundays, you have a Well Met, our Hearthstone podcast. A Tuesday nights is the Heroes Power Hour where we talk about Heroes of the Storm. Wednesday nights is obviously us here uh, to go and talk about Diablo. And Thursdays is the Payload podcast to go and talk about Overwatch. 
Um, we are even in game. You can go through and join us. We are the Blizz Pro Clan. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, just send us an email at westmarchworkshop at blizzpro.com uh, if you want to go through and join the clan. We do take in people as we have slots, and we give priorities to those that uh, go and email us a little bit about themselves um, and why they want to join. You know, it, we, the more we know about you, the more readily we'll accept you uh, to be a part of the community. Uh, but fret not. Uh, if you don't want to send an email, is perfectly fine. As we have spots open, you know, we hope to have room for everybody in the in the clan. Uh, if you don't want to leave your current clan, you can always go through and join our in-game community. It's the Westmarks Workshop. Just do a search for us to go in, hang out, and chat. Uh, most of the clan, as well as a lot of other people, are in there to go through, chat, and hang out, uh, and find games with. Uh, you can also come and chat with us occasionally. Uh, Discord, uh, it's you can find us at http colon backslash backslash. Do I even need to say that anymore? Uh, just go to the website discord.blizzpro.com uh, without needing to install anything to come uh, and hang out. You could always install the uh, Discord client um, if you wish to go through um, and find some more stuff there. Uh, you can also follow me personally. I'm at Nine Ball Gamer. Uh, in Leviathan, the person that is not here, you can always find at SA Stewart 111. And he streams occasionally as well. He's been trying to get back more into it, but unfortunately his computer is a potato and now a dead potato. Um, so it might be a little bit before he gets back up streaming. But you can find him at twitch.tv slash Leviathan 111. And of course, our special guest here, uh, Jay Howe, you can find um, at Jay Howe Gaming on Twitter. You can go through and find him um, if you do a search for Jay Howe or Jhow Gaming on YouTube, but also tell us, you know, where else can they find you? Do you stream? What what else? You know, by all by all means. Again, I'm just I'm giving you as much time. Please keep it under 20 minutes to go and talk about <laughs> yourself here uh, and uh, self promote. Yeah, um, Twitter I think is my main thing where I try and update. I I created a Facebook page like a month ago, and I <laughs> just I'm bad at social we, media. Yeah, uh, we. As much as Archon went through and talked about it all the time, I just did not believe him that Facebook was a useful form of advertising uh, for something <laughs> like uh, YouTube videos and shows. But who, who knows? Who knows? He's the one with all the experience in SEO. Maybe he's right. I'm wrong. Well, so I, we, I, we've never I love one. communicating on Twitter. It makes it uh, a lot easier for me. Um, YouTube, of course, you know, I try and do there. Um, I just recently had some pretty big life changes about three or four weeks ago. Um, so I've been trying to find ways to do more content. I've been doing a lot of Heroes of the Storm stuff because it's a game I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, mm -hmm. Diablo still being my first love. But um, I you do can play of... other games, right? Yeah, I, I hope so. It's loud. <laughs> uh, I'm only almost four years into uh, uh, to Diablo 3 now uh, in May. Um, but you know, I do a lot of stuff, you know, um, I don't always stream. I do stream on Twitch. Uh, it's just a J how four, 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 four. Um, I stream Diablo mostly. Uh, I pre-ordered an Oculus Rift. I'm going to be doing some VR stuff, but that'll mostly be for fun. Um, but hero stuff, if you guys are into heroes, I do a lot of casting there. Um, a lot of times it's on other people's channels or tournament organizations. So the number one way I announce stuff is on Twitter. Um, and that's kind of where you can kind of keep up where I'm going to be on any given night. Like, uh, Heroes Hype was on tonight. And I said, no, I want to talk about Diablo. So I took my name off the list. Oh my gosh. I, I am so sorry. No. I, having, having you miss something big like Heroes Hype. A little Steven, small, small Ram Shamble show like ours. Dude, Steven messaged me about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. I think. And he's like, hey, would you like to be on here? I'm like, yeah, let me check the, the caster schedule. And I went and looked at it. I was like, nah, I want to go talk about Diablo. <laughs> I, I removed myself from the caster schedule um, like a week and a half ago. And I was just like, I would love to be. I told you, man, like it was about a year ago. And I remember thinking, uh -huh. like, look at these guys. Like they're uh -huh. sitting on there talking about Diablo. And the fact that I like got invited, I'm like, heck yeah, I'm going to be on here. So I took myself off that just so I could be here tonight. Like I... I love Diablo, man, and the fact that I can sit here and talk about video games and talk about Diablo with like-minded people, like, that's pretty, uh, I'll keep it PG-13, it's pretty awesome. You can curse a little bit on the show. It's pretty we, badass, it man. Yeah. It's pretty badass to, to be on here. Like, I, I, I yeah. could talk about Diablo for God knows how long. Um, yeah, and, but... and, speaking, and speaking of Heroes Hype, you know, 
you going through and being on it. We also occasionally our uh, Blizz Pro's very own uh, DJ Tyrant is on uh, Heroes Hype as well. So he's on right now, actually. Yeah, so it's it's definitely something that <laughs> if you enjoy Heroes of the Storm, uh, the Heroes Hype Amateur Series is something that you absolutely have to check out. It is it is an amazing show. Um, go do it. Watch it. Go now. Uh, Blue, now. Do it. Uh, Weasley, thank you for that uh, comment as well. I really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, that that's it, man. Like I said, I, I really appreciate you guys having me on um, and being here. I, again, I, I wish Stephen was here. I would have loved to have chatted with uh, both you guys. Well, I, I but, guess uh, we'll just have to have you on again at some point in the future. <laughs> I quit Uh-oh. Diablo uh, about ten minutes ago. Sorry. Uh, ah, uh, darn. <laughs> yeah, you, I, know, you I saw you saw that you saw that ancient Mar- uh, Marauder's Helm. Realize I will never have that in my life, and just like that's it, I'm done. I I would inst- if this was Diablo two, I would be creating a a channel, uh, a <laughs> and I'd be like perf, almost perf, uh-huh. perf, uh, Marauder's Helm trade, blah blah blah. And uh-huh. if this was uh, two and a half years ago. I'd be on the Diablo auction house, put it at max value of two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yep. Or, or depending it's... upon what it is, like you know, like going for the uh, the max gold or selling it, you know, for like, you know, putting it on one of the uh, the third party trading websites and like trading for firstborn, you know, will <laughs> will accept their college fund, um, there we you know, go. as payment. Uh, but yeah, it was it was definitely it was a pleasure going through having you on the show. I'm closing to the outro screen here, um, but yeah, it was, it was great having you on. Again, very sorry that Stephen couldn't make it, but like I said, it just this just means that we'll have to have you on again um, at some point in the future, and also look for uh, some more hopefully familiar faces from the community that we'd like to go through and try and get on the show here, and, and maybe maybe at some point in the future, uh, Leviathan and myself will be on the show at the same time. Don't know. I'm not going to make any promises <laughs> uh, because 2016 has been a rough year uh, for all of us here. Uh, but uh, hey, I'll, it can't get any worse, can it? I need I need a piece of wood to knock on uh, rip, for that one. Rip PC today. Right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, with uh, that, do you have any other uh, closing comments or anything you'd like to say before we end the show? Uh, no, just uh, thank everybody for being in here and to be able to have this platform to talk about Diablo. Uh, again, just I just want to say thank you, and I uh, hope everybody has a good night. Yeah, so yeah, so good night, everyone.